Sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say, there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. The backseat. Check the backseat. All right, come here. Check the back seat. Gets in your head, right? Good. Because every year, dozens of children are forgotten in the backseat of a car by a parent or caregiver. All never thought it could happen to them. But with changes in routines, distractions, or a sleeping child, it can happen to anyone. Parked cars get hot fast and can be deadly. So get it in your head. Check the back seat. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. A crossover is crossover dribble. Sing for the crossover. Kyrie Irving. Crossover in the lane. It's one of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. Crossover. Crossover continues to evolve. Uh, time for the crossover. It's powered by Everlevel Concrete Repair in Omaha at EverlevelConcreteRepair.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's up? Baseball. It's baseball weather outside. Baseball oh, season yeah. now. Basketball is over around here. I guess so. We could. Uh, we're still wrapping up basketball, though. You know, basketball never ends, according to you. I hear this promo when I'm going to the bathroom. I do love building. basketball. I do love basketball, but I understand that when basketball ends, it becomes a different. You know, no, when basketball it's a different time, ends, we have to start talking about football portal season. Yeah, portal. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, portal. Portal. Yeah, yeah I don't you're want to talk running, about spring. You're not either. breaking down Hofstra's guards <laughs> to see if they'd yeah. be a good fit with Creighton. Well, that seems to be where everybody's looking. It's like, hey, can we? Is there anybody at the uh, low major level that could that scored like 15 points a game that would like to play for any of our local teams? The goal is to find your next Dalton Connect. <laughs> yeah, from Greeley to Knoxville. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Seems like a, maybe a bit of a one-off, but I don't know. A gem, if you will. Yeah, he was a bit of a gem. It's a gem or gem? Well, it's both, you know. Yep. When but, I was in school, like I said, teacher said, you have this guy. He's a real gem. Mm, had, mm. had to go town on you guys there. Uh, if you were in Kansas City today, would you vote yes or I no? would vote yes. Good for you, Connor. We need to keep the 3-8 cent tax. It's not my money. <laughs> and... Uh, because if they vote no, then the Royals will probably just leave Kansas City. See, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't either, but they're threatening that. Yeah, there's a lot very, of very threatening. There's a lot of pro teams that do that. Would they go to Nashville? And they call their bluff. Yeah, of course, but they like they already have the three eight cent tax. They just want to keep the three eight cent tax. Yes, that's what people maybe don't understand. It's like you want three eight cent for this, and you're spending all this money, and you got a team that won the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, we just want to keep the same money that they had before build them a new ballpark it'll be good it'll be fine i'm with you i will be nostalgic about the k closing when it does much like i am about the tropicana in vegas <laughs> today's the day i saw uh oh, there's RIP. people basically just looting it last night because it, it closed at 3 a.m this morning so it's it's closed now and so there's people just they were just stealing everything really? they possibly like they were sacking. Yeah, nobody cared. No, nobody cared. They, they didn't like, lock yeah. the doors or anything. You know what? Actually, like trying to rip apart slot machines. And t- <laughs> like seriously, they're like, "What's in here?" You ever been to a bar the night it closes? Ooh, no. It's just anything goes. That's awesome. Do they give bottles and stuff away? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Like, I want to be there. Gotta get rid of it. I want to yeah. be there with a screwdriver on the last day at the K and. Just rip out a seat or something like now, that. Now I believe I was told if you have a full keg, uh, you can obviously sell that back. So you can, you know, just like yeah. taking full kegs back home with your, you know, friends. 
I mean, that's the only thing you could trade in. Yeah. Really. <laughs> like a half a bottle of Jack. Like yeah, that's there's, true. There's no. They're not going to take that back. Yeah. Mm. See, that's why, whether it happens or not, looking forward to when they destroy the South Stadium, is that that final game yep. against Wisconsin, people just, like you would bring your own tool belt. Start <laughs> and ripping up the bench. And when the game is over, you you get out and you start you know, sawing up your bench. Taking hey, this with me. <laughs> you take it like they did the, the field goal post in Knoxville. Yes. Throw it into the river. Yeah, put it in my man cave. I want to throw this into the Salt Creek. <laughs> I mean, think about it, like what you could take in South Stadium. That's it. That's literally it. That's no, the that only little, thing. The white like, press box. Be oh, the, the oh yeah, the, the little tower thing with the gets the all twenty two. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. You could take that whole thing and. There's got to be uh, something in concession stands down below. Does there? Yeah. Like the nacho, the the nacho cheese warmer. <laughs> yeah, there's probably like a key, like a mobile kiosk thing that you could take. <laughs> The, uh, uh, all of the little the chairs you put on the seats. Well, what would you take? What oh, would you yeah, take from South backs. Stadium? Yeah, get some seat backs. Well, definitely would be. I was hoping if this ever comes to fruition that everybody would get their plank, like they would carve up your particular seat and they would oh, give it to you. That would be weird. Wow. Why you wouldn't want that? Well, what would you do? It, it would just be a piece of metal. It would be a small, very small piece of metal. But you would but put you that up in the man cave that only half that your, is your seat fits on. Your seat from Memorial Stadium. Sure. Because you're not going to be able to go back into that but seat. But it, does, it doesn't act as a seat if you cut it up into little pieces. It doesn't no, you'd have, have, that'd like, be a wall hanger. Yeah, you'd have to put Instead it on the Instead of wall. like, uh, I have a friend who, um, they worked at Rosenblatt. And so when Rosenblatt was torn down, they were not supposed to take stuff from Rosenblatt. But because they worked there year round, they helped themselves. Um, I guess one guy that used to work for the city took a couple of seats because the city had made a deal with a company to sell the seats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the guy took a couple of seats, put them in his garage. Somebody from the mayor's office back in the day went to this guy's garage sale, saw those seats, <laughs> turned him in. Oh, wait. So he was selling them at his garage sale? No, no, he wasn't oh, selling yeah, them, he, but he, he had them in his in garage. Oh, okay. And this person saw them. <laughs> what are they doing? And it's a they were like, whoa, 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 and turned him into the city. I know a guy who so bought a who bought a suit. They did an auction, I think, right? Yeah. Um, he bought a uh, a walk in a walk in freezer for super like giant yeah. walk in freezer for like four hundred bucks or something like that. What did the like, city, that's awesome? What did the city do? Uh, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, but they curious. like came after the guy. Wow. Come but on. I don't remember the so um because the what was the final event at Rosenblatt? Was it a Nighthawk game? Well, I, I uh, yeah, it yes, could have. I think it was. So. It, it might. It may have been a high school football game. Oh, that does ring a bell. I, I think it was Central and Prep. Oh, you, like yeah, you're right. Game you're there. right. Yep. Yeah, they did the right. Yep, you're right. Did okay. So either that game or like the the final Royals game. Did they have like security to make sure people didn't steal stuff out of the stadium? I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> Much like at Tropicana right now. People are just walking out with stuff slung over like, their do you shoulders. Think that somebody from <laughs> Rosenblatt on the final day of the Royals season was walking out with a seat. Yeah, and not walking out with great. I don't think anybody would have done yeah. anything about it. Who does? Yeah, what, what are you do? gonna do? What are you gonna do? The people that are paid there to actually police that aren't getting paid enough to get in anybody's way. To do Absolutely that? not. Like, well, well, hey, what do you got there? <laughs> yeah, might be like, oh, that's a good idea. Like they Enjoy. don't have security checkpoints on the way out. Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you got? Oh, cool. Good for you. See, Joe is right. Someone will want a uh, urinal trough. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be somebody, tough. Uh, you know, you're gonna need a crowbar. <laughs> would be kind of cool if you have like the storage space. You put a urinal in there. You're gonna need an yeah. axe. How great would it be in your man cave uh, to have a urinal from Memorial Stadium? That would be pretty neat. You can I, I buy cool. a ticket stub from that Prep Central football game on eBay for ten dollars. <laughs> you could you could buy a what for ten dollars? Ticket stub from oh. that game. Does it does it say anything cool on the ticket stub? Like no, like, last game like, at Rosenblatt, like Johnny's last hurrah. Or no, something. it just looks like a normal Ticketmaster ticket. I'm no, sure. No, yep. that's no, that's no fun. <laughs> Remember paper tickets? Yes. Like, what's the significance of this? So what the so the original Rosenblatt scoreboard ended up at Burke, and mm -hmm. yes, yeah. and now it, that yeah. pooped out. Yeah. Yes, um, they kept the foul poles. What else did they? What else would I want from Rosenblatt? I mean, there's a bunch of seats scattered around the city. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you see them. They auctioned yep. those off. They auctioned a few of them off. There's a couple over at Werner. Mm -hmm. I believe I've seen some at Pauly's. Oh, I bet. Don't, I, they, have, I bet, don't they have one or two at Pauly's? I bet that's true. true. I yeah, they did. I bet that's true. Um, I have an update from Las Vegas. Tropicana? 
Yes. All right. Uh, this is from Las Vegas locally. Great account. Everyone's great follow. account. Uh, Larry Flint's Hustler Club is offering free lap dances to all former Tropicana employees with <laughs> proof of employment. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, seven minutes ago. You got to bring in your pay stub. <laughs> You know what? We'll cash that check. I worked at Tropicana in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you just pull up the app like your your Paylocity? Like, see here, look. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they probably you're, worked you're off eight, Paylocity. Your, your ADP. Here you go. <laughs> now, are they going to implode Tropicana? Yeah. Now, see, I want to be there for that. Me too. I used to have a I, run of, like, we used to love a good have a lot of buildings that were blown up. Yeah. And so you'd go and watch. The, Remember the, when we used to blow up stadiums? Oh, I still go like back to the kingdom. Dude, yeah. that's a great, great video YouTube rabbit hole to jump into. It is. It is. Like, uh, oh. even watching the Rosenblatt press box come down was cool. Three Rivers Stadium. Yep. All those old veteran stadium when they blew them up. But the mm -hmm. kingdom is the one where you go, whoa. I think that, I think that was the one. There is the, the epic one where, like, they have the camera set up on a bridge. And there's a giant bus that comes By right Atlanta. In, Right, that's Atlanta. Yes. There's a giant the Georgia Dome. They're, they're, they got this perfect <laughs> shot of the stadium, and right as it's blowing up, there's this bus that goes right no! in front. <laughs> it's so funny. It and then is. the bus crosses through, and the stadium's just gone. It's just amazing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm drawn to it. If you can show me a good video of an implosion, I'm gonna watch it. The last big, uh, the last big explosion we had here, what implosion we had here was the uh, Cather Pound uh, dorms. Yes. That was a fun day. People were standing on top of the parking garages, yeah. just like getting a look at this thing. That was fun. I was Great I was locked that. into that. Yeah. The the memories of those storms. Yep. Just uh just wait until South Stadium goes sometime. I don't think they can implode it. It's, I mean, it's going to be some, gonna, be some risk with the other take structure. It down, kind of like piece by piece. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Well, you usually start there, and then, but I, I would think that there would have to be an implosion at some point, a controlled. Maybe implosion. a smaller implosion. Yeah, a small implosion. Okay. I think that's what the plan is with Tropicana. It's like they're gonna do as much oh, as they can. And there have been uh, blast what it. Steve Wynn was it the original Mirage? Uh, that was a pretty cool implosion on YouTube. I love where it. where you hear all the bangs and then like like a minute later that everything it just falls. starts falling. Yeah, awesome. There will be a big empty pit so, there for a couple of years. So would they take down? Like I'm watching the uh, no, uh, Ryan Field at Northwestern. They're taking it down piece by piece, kind of like they did in Lawrence. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't implode it all at once. But I'm wondering, like, what would they do with the K? Would they just hit the button? Yeah. I mean, it's all one, the, the, the back, you know, where everybody sits, that's all one piece. What are they going to do with the scoreboard? I don't know. The scoreboard isn't moving to the new ballpark looking at the drawings. I, I, yeah. I, what are they going to do with that thing? They have to sell it, right? <laughs> yeah. In one piece? Or could I get like a six by four? No, okay, you would know? you want just the no? The, the it's it's got to be the whole thing. The, would you just want the top? So they're gonna put it at a oh yeah, I would definitely want the top. Can they yeah, move? I the put crown, it on my house. Just the crown to the new building? Maybe uh, they're gonna they might, they're like, gonna the original, have to take something that, that and maybe put it outside the stadium as yeah. the original crown. Yeah, I, mean, I know it's not the original crown, but the the most recent crown. Here's the oh, thing, though: if they get a new stadium, stadium they're not gonna do anything to the K for the next couple of years. So some oh, stuff it's that gonna, runs down will oh, be, yeah. they'll just let go. It's going to be in disarray for the next couple of years. Well, the thing is, you don't have to worry because it's in such a great neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> you mean there being nothing around it yeah. at all? Yeah. Is it a desolate wasteland? Oh, uh, no, it's got that one. Nope, that's close. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when the Denny's uh, caught on fire? Yeah. Yeah. The Denny's so... caught on fire and the one hotel closed. <laughs> yep. Also, oh, the the Drury Inn is closed. The Drury and the Adams Mark, or maybe that's the same one. I'm pretty no, sure. No, Drury is where Denny's were. Adams mm -hmm. Mark's on the other side of the street. Yeah. Where do the visiting teams stay? Do they stay downtown now? Probably. And yeah, they just they used to stay at the, the old Adam bus Park. out. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So that'd be a good. Did spot. you say there's an Amico station, but nearby yeah, there is, is right across the street. Is it, uh, that's still that's still uh, and a Taco Bell. Yep, that okay. Taco Bell's been there forever. Yep, and there's a convenient there's a convenience store. I think there's a couple now. There's a gas station, and then a you know. Yeah, there you go. You got options. There. And then yeah. and then the most random like Missouri tourism spot is that little circular building. That, yeah, oh, yeah, that is right is outside that that like is? the main entrance to the K. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what that is. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I didn't know what that was. They don't even let you in. They're like, there's nothing going on here. We are in the parking lot. But yeah, I'd, I'll be curious to see what they do with some of those items in a couple of years. Hmm. Can't wait. 
this is all assuming that the vote gets approved today. Big vote. They've been they've been really pumping it on the Royals broadcast. Oh, so I, far this I, year. I I mean, I was surprised they went an inning last night without yeah. talking about it. They had George Brett on 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 Saturday, and he was like, "I think this is a great thing. You've got to vote yes." Every they do oh. like promos coming back from breaks. You got to vote yes. You got to vote yes. Royals are, George Brett ain't endorsing anything unless he truly um, feels it. Exactly. So he's not lending. So his people name. were oh. like to the point because opening day, and then they had John Sherman on. They're like, enough is enough. And I'm like, well, it is a broadcast that's owned by the team. Yep. Yeah, sure is. And they make you very aware of that. They're like, yeah, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. So we'll see. I, I assume it'll get done today. The new renderings, did I not? Did I see that they did not have the, the royal vision, though, with the crown? The crown. They have the fountains, but they don't have the crown. I always wonder how close to the quote unquote yeah. rending you gotta have that, they're going right? to look like. You, you got to have yeah. the video board with the crown around. I, I would assume that there is plenty of room for, you know, making changes yeah. to the original vision. I'd of, be very disappointed if they didn't do that. I'm glad the fountains are still going to be involved, but you got to have the crown there. You got a big crown scoreboard. Yeah, but you also want to you, you want to maintain the uh, the downtown skyline that well, you'll be true. looking at into the outfield. I feel like they can they can make some concessions there though. That's that's a that's a staple. Fountains? Will there be fountains? I think that I think there the fountain, fountains. Yeah, I think the fountains were in the rendering. Can I take a fountain, a little fountain probe from the fountains? You could do one last oh, trip into the uh, fountain. Yeah, yeah, like Fountain Lady. Yeah, I'll walk into the fountain. She's Lincoln, right? I believe that's right. Yeah, yeah she went to jail uh -huh. for that. Or you'd be yeah. like Trevor Bauer and throw a ball into the fountain. She had a nice day trip to Kansas City and ended up in jail. Yeah. She dove into the fountains. Would you like to throw a ball in the fountain like Trevor Bauer did? Oh, that'd be from good. the mound. You yeah. Just one day of everybody from the mound trying to throw the ball in to the fountain. That's a fun game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that'd be good. There's a lot of different things they could do. They could make money off of the stadium closing. That's for sure. Now, if Trevor Bauer didn't have that other stuff going on, you could make it just a Trevor Bauer day for like the last day. <laughs> And just throw baseballs into the fountain, but yeah. then, then he goes and you know was accused of doing other stuff. Uh, he's on TikTok, by the way. Oh, he's very sure active. he's very active on TikTok. He's a big social media guy. He general. is he is pitching to everyone he can see. He's so, like, let me throw to you. What, what why random was he guy pitching on TikTok? for the Mexican national team? Great question. Day. Don't know. It seemed to be a little peculiar. He has been pitching for J Japanese teams, anyone he can yep. find. Mexican teams, anyone he could find. Um. Yeah, I, I watched this whole TikTok about how he pitched against the Yankees. Oh, he plays yes. for the Red Devils, huh? This <laughs> oh. team changes from week to week. Didn't he get sent to the to the Korean minor leagues last yes, year? Yes, he, he did. Yeah, good job. He said it was a misunderstanding. Oh, oh. totally. And I'm like, how is that? <laughs> I thought they told me to get on this bus. I got on that bus. Like, and I'm a minor you, league. Like, was it a what it was a language? Different uh, you know, <laughs> deficiency. You didn't understand exactly what they were saying. He needs Ipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, maybe hey, which I'm, they can both hey, be on a rehab. Which Ipe I'm, is yeah, for hire. Hey, yeah. I'm worried about because I don't know if you ever made it out of South Korea. You yeah, haven't heard, heard from him. Yeah, you haven't. Oh, Ipe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Not a peep. Where is Ipe right now? What a great plot for a movie. <laughs> Just Ipe? Ipe and Trevor Bauer. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, you need as much as I need you. <laughs> it would no, be like just it would be forced together in a culture that they're both uh, yeah yeah in the Mexican league they're both in a culture <laughs> that they're unaware of. It's called Ipe and Trevor. Yeah, and it's on Netflix. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Bruin C said I uh, purchased some signage from Rosenblatt and Exarbon in my basement. Oh, nice. Now Exarbon Coliseum, didn't they just they they just tore that down piece by piece? Right. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that yeah. You ever went to the Exarbon Coliseum? I don't believe there was any uh, imposters racers. I, I don't. When, when did that thing go down? Tim Legler. Uh, mid nineties. Yeah, mid. No, 90s. no, no, no. Um, was it early two thousand? Maybe end of the nineties because the Omaha Lancers were still yeah. playing there. Yeah, because yeah, I, I never went there. Yeah, because then they moved to. They went to so Mid America the Center. Went to Mid America Center. Yeah, which was weird. And then they then went Civic. To, I still get then, I still get a little sad when I drive by and I'm going downtown and I see that big pit where the Civic used to be. Yeah. Yep, and I imagine the smells. Oh and, yeah, and all the things. Of many that a good, many a good memory. Now, what are the things from the Civic that people have in their houses? Um, uh, they, is the, there a funnel cake the maker? King's uh, floor, the old Kansas City King's floor. Oh, that was little cool. little chunks of yeah, it. There are there are pieces of the floor all over town. Where's the Jay's floor? Where's the um, Creighton floor? Uh, it's, it's a bar at uh, uh, Mama's. Pizza. Mama's, yeah. yeah, Mama's. They got the center court. They got the whole thing. Yep. The, well, they bought the uh, center part that had the the old Jay's yeah, logo, the basketball with the just Jay's. What about the hoops? 
the rims and the nets. What about uh, what, anybody do anything with the racer courts? That would have been that would have been an exarban one. Yeah, they're spread out all over town. Yeah. Those were I believe it's in Tim Legler's. House. Yeah, Legler's got it all. <laughs> He's got Sharbin Coliseum. Know, that, that's his hoop. He holds that place near and dear. First, game, first game ever did at Sarban Coliseum. It was like a terrible place to broadcast a hockey game because you had like obstructed view. Mm. Um, I tried right. to get up after the first period and my feet were stuck to the floor because it was just like syrup and you mm-hmm. know, spilled beer. I oh, love yeah. it. That's the smell of it, the junior never, hockey. Sarban Coliseum, yeah. when the Lancers were rolling, was like the place that's like the uh that's like the ice box in in lincoln like, it was that was when the ushl was like at its height yeah they had that little broadca- guys fight guys had, were old like a broadcast perch up there just a little area you basically have to you have to like climb a ladder to get up there it's funny stuff uh evansville i had to do a indoor football game in evansville and we were literally like on a hanging broadcast box old, like basically where the catwalk would be we were hanging from the catwalk in a, a, a box. Amazing. Yeah. What's, it was really odd. I don't want to put anybody on the, on the, on the clock here, but what's our next Omaha staple to, to go down? You know, what's, what's, what's our next? Wow. What's going to wind up on the retro t-shirt? Yeah, what's our what's, next implosion? What's the next? <laughs> hey, hold on here. So I got, thank you, Joe. Um, and by the way, seeing coach Stella in these pictures, uh, Brown park got the seats from, Rosenblatt. Oh yeah, that's right. They did. They did some nice improvements over there. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Joe, for saying this. And anytime I can see a picture with Coach Stella in it, that's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. They got the the statue. There was a statue at Rosenblatt that was not Warren Moore's. Of a guy oh. swinging a bat. By the way, how I'm did sure they, there was? How did that they, sounds about right. How did they get the Warren Moore statue over to over down? Did they take it like by? helicopter and they just lifted it over there or like how do you do uh, that no i think no it got, it, it, it got transported in the back of a truck yeah it got transported okay. on a 18 wheel do you not remember when the elephants came to town and they from the, the airport all the way to the zoo i do remember that that was fun that was a fun day what a day that was like breaking news <laughs> it was like a big day in omaha these new these new elephants had shown up and they trucked them to the zoo off down 13th street it was great <laughs> but uh, so okay so it's better watching that motorcade than when you have the bullseye motorcade. That was a little which uh, fun. Which Omaha facility dies next? Um, hmm. You know, are we gonna is so are, we're are talk- people gonna be bidding on we're the talking uh, implosion? Well, it doesn't have to be. Okay. I'm just thinking like Omaha staple. Um, so Split. like who's gonna who's gonna bid on the water slide at Funplex? You know, not to <laughs> not to put Funplex on the clock here. Was they anybody just a, they just did a refresh on their logo? Saw that. Was mm. anybody able to get a piece of the water slide at Moby Dick Water Slide? Mm. Mm. I know I had to educate you guys on Moby Dick Water Slide. And yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't know what venue would be next? Mm. Um, I mean, we have a lot of new stuff around. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe Woodman Tower just outgrows it. Oh no. We just take down the Woodman. But so because many good people. Well, who, got the old, who got the old letters really, that used to say just really Woodman that, you know? instead of Woodman life? You know, who got the yeah. old letters? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to buy the wood, please. Somebody's got a huge W in their basement. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, are you a big Cubs fan? Are you a big Cubs fan? <laughs> well, funny story. I am, but uh, this actually came from the top of the Woodman Tower. Mm. Um, or you just get wood. Well, so I'm trying to think of like old restaurants that have been torn down around here, like Venice Inn. Yeah. Some of the old steakhouses rest, rest peace, where rest people have tried to buy the signage. Yeah. Somebody yeah. tried to purchase the, the Venice Inn sign. What uh, happened to the bull at Anthony's? Uh, it's at the Sap Brothers, right? No, no. No, some, so, some guy think, from some guy bought that. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and took it back on a trailer. I had a presentation oh. to the current athletic director at Omaha that Omaha should buy it and then put it right at the entrance to Baxter Arena off a of center. Yeah. And then. Like if there was an event going on, anything that involved Omaha, the bowl would be lit up. Yeah. And then if Omaha won, his then, eyes turned red, and then there would be smoke. Oh, okay. or just like the bowl, or, bowl or great bit. just get the bowl and put it outside of the right field fence at uh, Tal Anderson. Hit and again, hit bowl win stake. Yeah. Yep. But he was not super excited about that. And then somebody <laughs> swooped in and bought it. Uh, it's in a truck stop. Yeah, it got. It, I thought that's why I thought it was Sap Brothers. I, I thought it's a, I think he's like North Dakota or oh, yeah. Okay. S- some guy, yeah. maybe some guy rolled in on a trailer and just why I took it, it was, and left. I heard truck stop. I thought for some reason it was Sap Brothers. Okay, that makes sense. That it was a truck stop. Mm. 
Uh, what about? I would like to buy like if if uh, if we ever lose the La Casa on Leavenworth, I'd like to buy oh, yeah. that sign. Or Ooh, forty five thousand is what uh, Bill paid for it. <laughs> moved that uh, Anthony's steer. And where did he take it? Uh, North Dakota. North yeah. Dakota. Oh, you... I'm sorry. No, uh, I I can't read Columbus, Nebraska. There you go. What? I thought it was in. in Nebra- I thought it was in Nebraska. T Bone Truck Stop. Oh, T Bone! Oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> T Bone! How did Omaha Athletics let that thing get away? Can't wait to know. go visit T Bone. Forty five thousand too much, too rich for their blood. Uh, Kent says the roller coaster from Peony Park is at Worlds of Fun at Camp Snoopy. Is this really? true? What? What are they? A little piece of Omaha in Kansas they, City. They give it a refurbishing. I, I don't, don't think know. I go into Camp Snoopy. So I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I haven't been to Worlds of Fun in many years. I haven't either. I, in fact, I remember the last time I was there, I was twenty one. So oh my god, it's been twenty four years. Uh, Brian says Oakview will be the next implosion. Someone well, will get that... the bear stuff machine from Build a Bear. <laughs> <laughs> We imploded the mall, and now there's just stuffing no. everywhere. You know what? I, want orange, I want an orange Julius sign. So I'm the like Julius excited sign. when Oakview Mall finally everybody's out of there, and it's one of those that shows up on the websites of like uh, deserted malls. Yeah, that they just you know like people go in and they'll ransack, mm-hmm. um, and it just like year after year it gets worse and worse. But the pictures, like somebody will break in and take yes. a bunch of pictures. Yeah. Another great YouTube rabbit hole for sure. But but think Old about malls. where Oakview Mall is. Like that piece of property, prime real estate. It is yeah. for somebody. Maybe maybe a new stadium. I mean, I think we need. We, we haven't <laughs> built a new arena in this town in a while. I think it's about time. I think yep. it's time. It's uh, been like ten years. West or, Omaha or, Arena. You know what? I mean, Astro's only been open for a couple of years. It's time for a new music venue. Mm, so there that's you go. true. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially can you out imagine? That way? Can you imagine a monster amphitheater right there? The one hundred forty fourth and second. And you could you could keep it nostalgic. Called the Oakview Amphitheater. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you could if even you build it. People will come. You could you could buy uh, some of the uh, businesses that still remain around yeah. there, but yep. the, the the AMC theater that's a mm-hmm. lot of space that you can use. Yeah, there's like an have, old Coles. There's a men's warehouse. The old men's warehouse. Golf Galaxy. Better than yes. the the cheese grater music venue downtown. Uh, which one's that? I don't. Know. Which one are we referencing? Uh, the the steel steel house. Oh, uh, that that thing is nice. That's a nice place. Jeez. It's not necessary, though. Maybe we build a sphere at Oakview. Oh, oh, our, oh the Omosphere. Oh. <laughs> Why don't we just do this? Wait, hold on. Have you, have you been to the steel house yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I, I don't want to see. I don't want to see Melissa Etheridge playing. Wow, playing both her hits. Am I uh, the only one? There's one of them. Uh, uh, Scott Snap was there two weeks ago. Yeah, was. Josh Mine's will soar. Ah, thank you. Someone who's finally heard that song. Josh. I've been playing that up, and everybody's looking at me all crazy, like such hey. a hater, Josh. You okay. Okay. Let's it. play ball. It's so, game day. Let's get rid of Oakview Mall. Tear it down. Love it. Omosphere. Casino. The atmosphere. Oh, casino. A monster oh, casino. Right mm. in the smack dab in the middle of West Cas- Casino sphere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a casino sphere. Yeah, the best of both worlds. Let's think big on this. They could move the Tropicana to Oakview. That'd be great. We'll take it. <laughs> Hotels. You don't want it. We'll Can take you imagine it. a huge casino right there? A big ass casino smack dab in the middle of suburbia West O. <laughs> oh, well, how could that go wrong? This is originally in Vegas, hey, 1957. Mm-hmm. You don't think the owners of that Chili's, they'd be in heaven. Yeah, oh, exactly, they would. they would. They would have a great time. They would have a great time. Oh, I'm all for this. I mean, I Barnes and Noble might have to move. But yeah. That's okay. I think this would be amazing. Uh, Golf Galaxy. This is, beers, as, yeah. beers are this is as good of an idea as when we try to turn Milt's into a luxury golf resort attached, <laughs> to, right. attached to the casino. <laughs> We got big plans, you know. I think this Come is on. brilliant. Look at that land. You can have a monster casino really right could. there. Sports book, it's kind entertainment of, venue. And mm. it's kind of tiered up too. So Bud Crawford's levels. last fight of his career <laughs> is in there. <laughs> Whoa. Is that the Elmosphere? Yeah. <laughs> Resort and casino. Good idea. Or you just call it the Oakview Resort and Casino. We got plans. If the city needs any help, we got ideas right here. Just listen to this never, show. Never short of them. But not for too long because Josh will probably offend somebody. What? <laughs> the cheese, what the cheese grater? <laughs> it looks like a cheese grater. It does not. It look like a cheese, cheese, cheese grater. grater. I don't know. It's, it's called Steelhouse, and I couldn't remember the I name. Think, uh, <laughs> I think you'd like cheese it in grater. there. 
It's a, I, I've, I've seen a couple of shows. It's not bad. Bring an act that's worth a darn and I'll go. The Killers. Killers were there. They opened it up. Uh, okay, you got one. Well, who do you want to play there? Taylor Swift? Oh. She can't play there. It's too small. Too small a house for uh, her. I saw a fake, uh, Mel- uh, fake uh, Melissa Etheridge. Yeah, but what's her group? Uh, Indigo Girls. No, no. <laughs> not, not Melissa no, Etheridge. No. Stevie Nicks. Uh, fake uh, Fleetwood Mac. I oh, yeah. You Mac. saw Fleetwood Mac. I mean, I'm looking at this lineup and I. Nothing's screaming to me. So have you been out to the Astro? Now, their lineup is not bad. No. Why wouldn't you go to the Astro? Who's have you playing? Been, have you been to Sumner? <laughs> You got it. it, no. it not have everything could be the biggest thing. Josh. Have you been to the new revamp Sokol? Uh, the Admiral? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I have. Okay. <laughs> and? Did you like it? Hey, the Indigo Girls are coming to the Astro. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, 38 there special. I am to find. Yeah. yeah. Some 41. Sweat. Some 41 the, is still a thing. The Phil Collins experience. Now, that does not feature phil collins probably yes. chicago it's it, oh nice chicago let's go see chicago lyle love it i don't know who that is let's think of some 41 uh, is it? Lyle love it. married to julia roberts yeah for a brief moment okay. and you looked at lyle love it at the time and went huh how <laughs> yeah <laughs> what am i doing wrong okay this summer they got the wallflowers they got slash wallflowers is good melissa etheridge and jewel of course and jewel and jewel <laughs> and jewel i nailed it <laughs> it's always Melissa. It always but is. I don't. I don't see anything wrong Let's with that. Now that means she had to cancel her sh- appearance at Harrah's. It, <laughs> it's true. If Kansas City <laughs> needs maybe someone she'll do that later in the week <laughs> to sing a national anthem or to represent, <laughs> it's Melissa Etheridge every single time. I'm the only one. <laughs> you said two songs. That's one. What's the second? one I don't have the second one. Okay. I, I just, I just assumed one. there was one <laughs> I was maybe forgetting. <laughs> All right, so we got plans. Let's uh, go. This is, uh, you got a little you summertime. You could be outdoors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Josh, you can need to go experience to some of our county. Omaha venues. Check them out. What a great bit! I could do an arena tour. Yeah, an arena vlog. Josh gives his reviews of places he hasn't been to, but yeah. already is pre-programmed to hate <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. I think the musical act will go a long way in your your evaluation. Sure. Yeah. The weather, the beers. Yeah, you'll love it. Mm-hmm. You'll we love could play it. a game where. We'll just take Josh once a month to a concert, and he has no idea who's playing. <laughs> it's, and it's always <laughs> Melissa Etheridge. <laughs> We're just going to follow her around the country. Yeah, I'll, I'll go on a Melissa Etheridge tour. <laughs> I'm a Melissa Etheridge roadie. <laughs> I'm super fan. Well, well, what do you think that looks like? Not me. they do exist. <laughs> Not me. They do. Black Velvet is Melissa Oh, Etheridge. there you go. Yeah. Oh, black. yeah, yeah. Black, black, black Velvet. velvet. <laughs> Did Kerry Carpenter have to get out of school today to play? <laughs> he does look like a child. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Tiny baby Kerry Carpenter. Three MLB seasons. He looks like he's in high school. I like these dudes who were getting drafted like less than a year ago and are already in the big league. Shout out White Langford, my best friend, White Langford. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's he's legit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kerry Carpenter's 26. Now, where's uh, where's Dylan Cruz? Is he going to be? Uh, uh, okay. So that's why they, they said Paul Skeens was scared of facing him. So he wanted to go to AAA instead of double mm. Oh, that's the rumor? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, we've committed a terrible, terrible mistake. What? Uh, uh, Alana Miles sings Black Velvet. I, I didn't we think We just was, got this yeah. from somebody. This is I, not me. I didn't. Uh, that didn't. When you said that, I didn't think that sounded right, but I figured, okay, I don't know it well enough. I'm just going to go with it. That was no, the just, song. That was just a text. Felt like that was a song that was a long time ago. But that uh, we are still seeking oh, a second song from Melissa. Uh, I think I know it. Is it? Come to my window. Oh, no, that's got no. it. Is that not Melissa? Okay, let me, let me go to her Spotify. Yeah, yeah, that's Melissa. Yeah, okay. there's your second one. There it is. We did it, everyone. We got two. We did it. Two Melissa Etheridge songs. I'm the only one like the way I do. Come to my window. Bring me some water. I want to come over. This sounds like a message. Oh, yeah. I want to come over. Yeah, okay. And they all sound the same. Sounds like something you would put on your day. I want to come over. <laughs> come to yeah. my window. Bring me some water. I want to come over. <laughs> Those are three straight <laughs> Melissa Etheridge songs. It just sounds like a cry for help. <laughs> she likes company. <laughs> hey, she got back into the But mix. she'll come to you, too. She's a huge Chiefs fan. I mean, once she did a song for the Chiefs. Yes. She has banged the drum. Yep. 
at a Chiefs game. Yep, she sings the national was... anthem at every Royals game, I think. Mm-hmm. Or uh, God bless America. Do they the... do they say local recording artist Melissa? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's a national Grammy. Yeah. I'm sure. Award I'm sure winning. they probably say that now. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, now that we got all that figured out, you guys have a <laughs> have a great afternoon. Enjoy the baseball tonight. Are you going, Gary? Are you are you um, uh, brave debating. the weather? I might be a weather weenie. Yeah, I might be too. Oh, God. but there's no TV. No, there is flow I sports. Is. I don't yeah. want to play. Pay thirty bucks well, for Flow Sports. I'm sorry, borrow someone's login. But you have to know that it's a top notch broadcast featuring John Bishop and Nick Hanley mm-hmm. and various mm-hmm. camera angles. Yeah, it's true. Well, I, the production from Creighton is okay. It's very good. But there are some other schools, just like BTN Plus, oh, where it's on the struggle bus. Yes. yes, yes. Try watching a Rutgers game on BTN well, Plus. Look at okay, so the Northwestern game, and and I think it's a great thing in the Big Ten that they allow students to do the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, because that's a great experience. But, but, you know, you are paying a certain amount of yep, money. You are. Yep. And there are some baseball stadiums in the Big Ten where you get one camera. There yeah. are. The, and there are some in the uh, on Creighton's non-conference schedule where you just get Tommy Helixo's phone. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Which I think it's time is to go good. Facebook Live. But don't you think, okay, so in all honesty, I mean, 30 bucks a month for Flow Sports is a lot. All the other yeah. things we pay for streaming, thirty yeah. bucks is a lot. But yeah, it's very I, good. I looked at my B10 Plus; it is ten ninety nine. Flow Sports should not cost more than. But my B10 should Plus. we have a expectation level? Yep. Well, if it's you're 30, saying, if you're paying thirty bucks a month, you should. If it's thirty bucks a month, you expect it to be really good, and it is. I refuse to get Flow Sports, so I would not know. I've just seen clips, non Creighton. Like Creighton does a great job, but like the BTN Plus stuff is a little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, it'd be nice if like regular BTN would put baseball on being how basketball is basically over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice for me to like this past weekend, big 10 season conference season got rolling. Well, you gotta have, you gotta have time. It's Purdue and Iowa. Yeah. You gotta put those, uh, you gotta put those old Michigan games on somewhere. Yeah. Old Michigan football. And every other day you'll have 24 hours of Purdue basketball. Then the next day, 24 hours of Iowa wins basketball until the final four is over. And then we can get baseball. on. There's no baseball in Peacock. Is there? Baseball, softball? I don't believe so. Oh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. They Maybe just, they, they should. They just did basketball and yeah. Why don't they just put the the children on Peacock? I, I they don't... do have a kids section. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Nebraska and Rutgers baseball featuring yeah. children announcers. Oh, there's slime can come. Yeah, out it could of be the like dugout. a Nickelodeon thing. Yeah, It'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, you watch some of the other schools in the Big Ten that do BTN Plus, and it's college kids. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes they just get a little off. They started talking about other things. <laughs> Get a little distracted. That's okay. We all do it. And yeah, you can always a, tell you can tell the most project. passionate like baseball fan bases in the Big Ten, one, Nebraska, because people lose their mind. Yeah, yeah they'll start tweeting at yep. the children. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't you guys do any research? It's like, no, not really. I had class two hours ago. <laughs> all right. See you guys later. Bye. That's the crossover. Powered by Every Level Concrete Repair in Omaha at EverLevelConcrete.com. It is Tuesday. We'll start things off next. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Chris Fetters covering the Washington Huskies joins us. Gannon was in Palm Springs last night with the president of the university and the new football coach that he hired for a major donor event. Literally, that thing wrapped up, and I have to expect that right after that happened, Gannon was in the middle of trying to finalize this deal at Nebraska. Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Breezy and cool for your Tuesday. Expect cloud cover to stick around the first half of the day. Can't rule out some early spotty drizzle. Expect more sunshine in the afternoon, though there is a slight chance of a late day shower. North winds will continue to gust up to 35 miles per hour with highs in the low to mid 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. A Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. 
The sports calendar is loaded. FanDuel's going to make it easy on you to get on on all the action. And it is exciting and it is jam-packed because right now, new customers, you can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Gary, that's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tourney. Major League Baseball, NBA, which the play starts on the 16th. You've got NHL and the Stanley Cup playoffs just around the corner, too, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com. Use the promo code ZONE. That's FanDuel.com slash ZONE and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 plus and present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 bets off. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Biana's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze, and right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you like make an announcement that we're ready to it's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, welcome in. Happy Tuesday. It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. Connor Happer and Josh Odson with you. Josh, welcome back. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. You have decided today, uh, I don't think you've met, I don't think you've seen a day that was like, you know what, I'm going to approach this with violence today. And here we go. Off and running. Josh is back. Well, you know, you got to make an impact. You want people to <laughs> you want people to know you're there. You want people to feel you a little bit. Yeah. That's all right. So uh, I said the apparently very hot take that Omaha has many, some might say too many. No, you hated on the steel house in particular. Music venues. Yes. I disagree. I think local music is great for the soul and uh, needs... Uh, there needs to be more. Back in my day, you played either the small venue, the middle-sized venue, or the big venue. No, and a, that was good enough for us. There's a hundred venues. Yeah. And we we have space for everybody, Jeff. Some of them even filled with good artists. That'll still happen. That'll still happen. Not everything could be Olivia Rodrigo. Oh. That guts to her. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> she was... Floating from a mm-hmm. moon, a half moon, a crescent moon, or something like that. We love the crescent moon here in Omaha. We do. Uh, welcome to the show. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Alan Bell will join at 1130. Uh, we'll talk to him about uh, what we're looking for this weekend in the Final Four. Uh, of course, Tennessee's victory over Creighton in the Sweet 16 and uh, various other things with AB. Uh, Jacob Bigelow, regular guest in at 1 o'clock to uh, talk 
I think big picture college hoops, but also what's going on with Nebraska guys in the transfer portal. Same thing with Matt DeMarinas of White and Blue Review will join us at 12.30 to talk about uh, some hoops and portal and what the future looks like for Creighton. Also a little baseball tonight at the Chuck between 20 and 4 to Creighton and 20 and 5 Nebraska ranked Nebraska. That's right. You've Put some all respect on that. You've all gotten your wish. They have ranked Nebraska, at least a couple of the publications have. Anyway, by the way, the the uh, the poll that everybody cares about for college baseball is probably D1 baseball, right? That's the one. It's like when you put the little number next to their name, that's the one that we look at. It's that There's or no Baseball AP America, poll. right? That or Baseball America. It, it's probably if you want to put a little number by your name, it's whatever number is the highest. Right. You're like, yes, that poll has us. That poll has us at number 16 or something like that's that. That's the one I care about. Yep, that's exactly uh, right. Yeah, D1Baseball is what NCAA.com okay. uses. Okay, so that, that seems mildly official. Um, so we'll talk to uh, those guys today. That's the lineup powered by the Rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. If you'd like to get in touch with the show, we'd like to hear from you. 402-951-1620 on the 42 Degrees of Source hotline. Call or text that number. Twitter at Happer Show at Connor Happer. At producer underscore Josh on the JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed. Email Connor or Josh O at 1620thezone.com on the Equitable Bank inbox. We say good morning to our YouTube streamers, commenters this morning, 1620thezone TV on YouTube or conveniently located at 1620thezone.com where Dion is this morning. And he says, Why do these guys talk about themselves? Would you like to refute that claim at all? Me? I mean, we do talk about ourselves quite a bit um, because our experiences end up being the show. But I believe during the crossover, I don't think we talked about ourselves really at all. We talked about uh, blowing stuff up mm -hmm. mostly. You um, know, certain segments of the audience hear what they want to hear, believe what they want to believe. Uh, Theo follows up. He says radio celebs like radio celebs. Am I right? Damn right. Also, Tiger Shark Diver uh, agrees. Good question. Dion. And then Theo Runs back in and he says, Jays pay actors to sit courtside, IMO. Can we confirm this? I Creighton pays actors to sit courtside and, you know, pretend like people actually root for their uh, for their teams. Just going to go ahead and... You don't think so? I don't think that is real. Okay. I have no proof, though, to be completely honest That's with true. everyone. If you could show me proof of this, then we'll we'll report it on our show. Feels like a rumor for now. We'll just probably keep it right there. I believe Theo is going to be on the Alex Jones show <laughs> he has later a lot. today. He has various theories about various things. Uh, last night, a uh, couple of bangers on the women's side. We'll talk about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and UConn and USC. UConn going to another Final Four. UConn men and women, NC State men and women, both in the Final Four. Just as we all predicted. Uh, we'll talk about the the portal whether it's nebraska ball losing guys creighton losing guys in the portal we'll preview the baseball game take a look at that nebraska football having some morning spring practice today uh we'll talk defense afterwards with tony white and a couple uh defenders i think terrence knighton pot roast will be a part of that as well uh there's a big vote in jackson county missouri today which i'll be keeping my eye on um, Josh has a couple questions regarding college basketball coaches. I do. I, and, I care deeply. Um, I did see that the breakfast runs up at, at least exists for the, for the moment for, at one specific location for a day. It's going to sell out in like six minutes and everyone's going to be like, Oh, why didn't I get it? I, I wanted it. Well, I didn't win line right away. That's exactly what they'll be like. Yep. That's exactly what they'll do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're excited to follow along with the discourse on the breakfast runs it today. That is the, uh, setup for the show. Like I said, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us. Even if you have random conspiracy theories that you'd like to bounce off of us as well. Uh, no, uh, no, no TV in the common way tonight for Nebraska and Creighton baseball, but that's okay. I would encourage everybody to get on over to flow sports where you could listen to John and Nick, our own John Bishop and Nick Hanley on the call tonight. For Creton baseball, it'll be uh, it'll be the first Creighton home game that I am not a part of the broadcast for. Today. Wow, sad. I mean, J I've J been kicked off. John's going to do a great job, but John's I, excited about his new scorebook. Yeah, apparently you did it for him. You did all his homework. Well, I for didn't. Him. I didn't do any of it. That was given to me, and then I 
you know, started passing. Along. Don't be so modest. Uh, it does bring up the question. Why isn't this on TV? I do not. The Nebraska Creighton game is I... almost always on television. Nebraska public media didn't uh, didn't come through for us tonight. That's OK. CBS Sports Network didn't come through for us tonight. But you get to hear local voices. But no one's asking why, Connor. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have an answer for you, Josh. What's on the schedule for uh, them tonight? Let's for, find out. For Let's NPM mm-hmm. or for CBS Sports Network? That is what I do not know. Oh, what a complicated grid this is. Okay. Yeah. Talk I, amongst yourselves. I could go. I could go to the guide. No, I figured out how to work it. And press 12. And Actually, wasn't got. that complicated. All right. What's up? Got a nice uh, episode of Finding Your Roots tonight. That's good. Followed by Julius Caesar, The Making of a Dictator. Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr. Mm. Julius Caesar, Making of a Dictator. Yeah, you couldn't preempt that. I guess PBS NewsHour rolls from 6 to 7, so you can't miss that. No, hey, hey so, you know. You can't have them all. Yeah, I mean, it costs money to you, you can't have them all. put on those types of broadcasts. I yep. understand. They'll get the other couple. I didn't know if there was something else on tonight. They're like, hey, this is so big. Can't, ah, can't move it. That's okay. That's all right. Well, we got, we got a couple good teams playing ball tonight mm-hmm. at, uh, at the Chuck, and we will get into that as we go on throughout the show. Uh, that is the setup for today. We'll come back and start things off. We'll re-familiarize the, uh, our, ourselves with each other. Is we haven't been in the same room together since uh, last Wednesday. I, we've missed each other last dearly. Last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, we've missed each other dearly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, so we'll get uh, reacclimated in plenty, in plenty more as we uh, come back on the Connor Happer show. On, <laughs> wait, by the way, one thing uh, from Tony. Uh, Hi, Tony. I thought for sure it'd be Rick Steves' European Vacations on <laughs> NPTV. It's a great watch. By the way, I was guessing Antiques Roadshow. Antiques Roadshow could be a possibility as well. Nope, none of those. Just uh, no baseball tonight on NPM. Back with more next on 1620 The Zone. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620TheZone.com. Mexitli Restaurant by Chef Alberto Cardenas offers you an authentic Mexican cuisine experience with the traditional flavors of your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. At Mexitli Restaurant, they offer you the experience of tasting Mexico in every bite. The best tacos, birria, quesadillas, and more. Visit them at Mexitli Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Harney and look them up on Facebook at Mexitli Restaurant or call 531-772-0550 to order. Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour Thursdays starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey, guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Get signed up for this year's Leahy Clawson Maverick Run, Saturday, April 20th at Baxter Arena. This race has something for every type of runner. With a one-mile kids race, a 5K walker run, or a 10K run. New this year, the 5K and 10K courses are certified. And there's a kid zone inside Baxter Arena. The event starts at 8 a.m. Saturday, April 20th. Go to omavs.com slash maverick run for more information and get signed up. Proceeds go to Omaha Women's Athletics. It's the Maverick Run at Baxter Arena, April 20th. See you there. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. 
and there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time, time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day. And it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is the official station of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament in Omaha. Follow all the action from the first tip-off to the final buzzer right here. Westwood One's coverage of March Madness is locally presented by Woodhouse Auto Family and is also locally brought to you by John Higgins Weather Guard, Burger Elliott and Pritchard, and Ted and Wally's Premium Ice Cream. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Welcome back, Connor Hamper, Josh Johnson with you. Uh, a reminder to get signed up for the VIP Club, 1620 the email. You'll be the first to know all the exciting content, things that are going on, upcoming uh, things like sports games. There'll be a busy sports calendar coming up soon as well. You can get, get all that straight into your inbox. Uh, just sign up, head to our website, 1620thezone.com, and get signed up for the VIP Club, 1620 the email there's also uh you can get nick's vlogs straight to your inbox those were good um and they they were good they they were good nick yeah, did a good job he did i i i'm not the kind of person who is even like physically capable of holding my camera out and just taping everything i see mm-hmm. i have too much shame for that right and so we we have nick who apparently doesn't have much that's why we have a young on staff that's exactly right you don't think anything of it when you see the guy in the weird uh you know floral print shirt walking around with a camera in vegas nope no even not the, even the ten, one of the 10 weirdest things you'll see not even remotely close yeah. uh so yes you can get all that straight to your inbox 1620 the zone dot com with 1620 the email couple of uh, bangers on the women's side last night you know it's amazing to me josh um and i know there's been a lot of uh, bigger picture conversation about uh lsu uh, the LSU women's basketball team over the last couple of days for, um, for well, they're a real lightning rod, aren't they? Yeah, for both good and for bad reasons. I want to say this about that that group, um, and they 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 have quite the coach, uh, quite the personality as a coach, and maybe just maybe this has something to do with it. Um, but we talked about Iowa quite a bit throughout the season. There are times playing Nebraska, and at times they seem, I don't know, a little a little hectic, a little. A little sped up, but they do have the ultimate safety net in, in Caitlin Clark. Um, and you saw that on display last night. It's amazing to me that LSU made Iowa look like the more composed basketball team. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what I took away from that game. They kind of just lost their heads a little bit. Yeah, that might be a top down problem. Maybe. 
Maybe they're focused on really weird things. I don't know. Interesting theory. I mean, but but I I, I felt like that was a point of emphasis. I mean, first of all, great basketball game last night with stars and all the stuff, and 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 uh, they were both really good. Um, but I felt like Iowa made that a point before the game. They were like, "Hey, if 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 we keep pressing and if we keep being there, and Caitlin keeps triggering people by making forty foot threes, they're gonna lose their heads. We will break. Them. Yeah, their yeah. their heads will fall off." And you know that that kept on that kept on happening well, a little bit last well, night. It's been, a, it's been a tough twenty four hours for Haley Van Lith as well. Hit him. Yeah. Uh, I mean LSU has tough shown year for her actually. You can. You can this year. You can absolutely get in their heads and yeah. get them to do something that you would think a basketball team would know not to do. LSU has shown that they will do that thing that they're not supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Yep, little, uh, little self destructive maybe, mm-hmm. just a little bit. Absolutely, a great a bunch of great players, a, a conglomeration of a of a bunch of really good players that you know in some cases. You know, didn't make a lot of sense in which the ways that they were deployed. But you also have to credit. I mean, I know Kate Martin had 20 last night, and there was a lot of talk after the game from the talking heads about, you know, how good her teammates were and stuff like that. And and you you have to have a level of that. But um, I, I still don't think they're. I still don't think the Iowa women are as good as they were last year. Um, when they when they went to the national championship game and had Sonano in the middle and and I, I thought they were a little bit more put together last year, um, you know I know that from from seeing them up close really in each of the last three or four years, um, so I, I feel like they were, I, I feel like this is a this is not as good of a team this year and they're back in the final four and we got to be honest like they're doing it on the backs of uh, they're doing it on the back of Caitlin Clark. Who dropped what forty one last night? That is correct. Forty one last night. Um, just canning thirty footers like it's nothing all day long. I Kim Mulkey after the game is like, yeah, well, there's not really anything special you do. You you just kind of guard her. And believe it or not, she's actually right. Now you could you could choose to put the right people on her, and I'm not sure that you know Haley Van Lith was the was was the right answer to that. And I think they figured that out probably a little bit too late. But that is the key. I mean, you just have to go, you have to just have to like you have to push her around a little bit. You have to mm-hmm. push her off yeah. of her spots and she's still going to make her shots, but it can't be it can't be like, ah, well, you know, she's going to get her 40 and then we have to deal with the other stuff. Like, yeah. No. That's, you you can make her work harder <laughs> for her 40 if you're going to allow her to get 40. You can make her work really hard for 30. If the more shots she takes, um, you know, she's going to make more, but the better opportunity you have to you know, to get rebounds and get other possessions as well. So um, they're not, they're not as good as they were last year. It makes this run even more impressive. Um, and now I, I'm, I'm, this is not, this is not ha- have anything to do with conference cheering or anything like that, but I kind of hope they win. <laughs> I, I kind of hope they win. I, I I'm, I'm here for the storyline. Obviously Paige Beckers and, and Caitlin Clark in the, in the final four will be awesome. Caitlin Clark against the school she wanted to go to. Yeah. But Gino, Gino never came. Never showed he up. never showed up. So Caitlin had to bring the fight to him. I'll say this. If they, if they do win it all, she's going to have to drop 40 two more times yeah. at least. Yep. You know, at least 40 two more times. Uh, I'm, I'm going to defer to you on this, Connor. You watch more women's basketball than I do, although I have increasingly watched more and more over the past few seasons. How rare is a 31 to 26 opening quarter in the game of women's basketball? Feels like a lot. Um it, Bo- both teams were making a lot of shots. They go it? they go and the, you know like in order to keep up with Iowa they're going to have those they're going to have like 35 40 point quarters mm-hmm. at you know at some point in time and it's just going to be like all right can we can we stick with them can they not break us during this period of time. Um so it'll it'll happen especially with that team from time to time but I I did like one thing, and you saw the clunky ending to the USC UConn game last night. Yeah, like that is a staple of women's basketball. It is, it is increasingly difficult to close out opponents because you have missed free throws, um, and you have, um, you know, a lot of physicality. Like the level of physicality ramps up tremendously during that period of time where the women's game isn't necessarily like 
who can be more physical with you where the men's game really is. It's more about skill and your ability to, um, you know, to be in the right place at the right time. And there, there's like a purity about that, that the women's game still has to it. But when you ratchet it up and it's a close game or it's like a 10 point game with a minute left, everything turns into the dogfight again. And it gets really, really hard. It gets really, really, that's a staple of the women's game. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a, if you thought the last, minute of a men's game was tough to watch the last minute of a women's <laughs> game is, is is a pretty tough watch we saw that in the yukon usc game um my other takeaway uh this is more of a takeaway from this morning versus last night um men yes listen up i'm not saying we here on the connor happer show get everything right all the time Uh-oh. either josh is looking at the camera uh, he's about to say something turn on the tiktok cam it's okay to say that you don't normally watch this product It's okay to say you don't normally watch women's basketball. You don't have to pretend to be the expert on it. I will refer you to a clip from Undisputed this morning. Uh Uh-oh, what did they say? Where uh, one of the, uh, it was Paul Pierce. Okay, so it's tough for them because they're getting dragged for not talking about Caitlin Clark. (laughs) And then you tell them to talk about her. And they don't know what they're talking about. So, like, which one do you want? True. It, it's just to be fair, a little bit on the, that. But I'd like to hear what Paul Pierce had to say. Paul Pierce said, uh, Iowa had a white girl do it to those black girls, and I didn't think she could. So, respect to Caitlin Clark. Probably a middle ground between that and not talking about it at all. Well, Caitlin Clark is white. Very. <laughs> very <laughs> poll question is caitlin <laughs> clark very white yeah probably not probably not it's okay to just say you know what i don't normally watch this and i had a good time uh, yeah that's you yeah maybe just go with that yeah maybe just go with that one mm. i agree with you josh it is um but this happens with col- with men's college basketball too True. Like we we got the people in the studio who don't watch a lick of it all all year long, and they're like, hmm, "Look at this! This is kind of fun." Who is this fat guy for NC State? <laughs> DJ's fat. I like this guy. I kind of like this guy. And uh, which which brings me to my final point from the Iowa game last night. Connor can't help but notice all the times that I've had to eat crow on this show. I believe it is now time for you. Uh oh. Now, you said some very nice things in your opening statements about Iowa women's basketball, but you also said weeks ago that they will not make the Final Four, Mm -hmm. and I can't help but notice that they are now in the Final Four. That's a good observation. I believe you said to me privately that you didn't think they'd make the Sweet 16. Well, that was close, too, by the way, but close doesn't get you anything. That's right. Close only counts in horse grenades, (laughs) I've been told. So yes, and uh, 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 what is this? What do I have to do? An apology? Yeah, that feels like enough. I will. I will own what I have said on the show. Takes in bio. <laughs> I will own what I have said, and uh, I was wrong about Iowa women's basketball. Also, and it, it, Caitlin Clark was a bad person to bet against. I will add that. Yeah. Um, I looked at my bracket p- pick them for on on the ESPN app for the women's tourney yeah how you doing uh i'm doing okay i got uh ones and threes in the final four i got three of the teams right okay so i'm feeling pretty good about that you didn't have nc state i did not <laughs> shocker i know yeah. um reese davis has only missed seven games in the entire tournament wow and he got all final four all four final four teams correct shout out to reese yeah good job Just by him say. Who says you don't need to watch in order to get stuff right? He must be dialed in. Um, Or he's not watching and just guessing. And just picking relative chalk. Sometimes it happens that way, Josh. Well, nice job by Reese Davis. Yeah. Uh, By the way, we get a text here from uh, from the text line from Brian. Hi, Brian. Your thoughts on the five fouls per quarter versus the seven for the men. I like Mm -hmm. the one and one. Um, We've talked about this a little bit before. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not like totally I, I feel like the women's game and how the fouls work and the and the bonus situations are a little bit more clean. Um just because it's it's it it turns very easy to sort of, you know, um you, you have you have a quarter, the media breaks at five through, um, you get the five fouls, you immediately shoot the double bonus. 
there is something about the one and one that I do, I, I guess, appreciate because you have to make a free throw in order to get another free throw. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't make a particularly big difference for me. I I, I think I prefer the women's game. Um, I don't I also don't mind that they're different. I don't mind that piece of it as well. But um yeah, that'll that'll be something that people watch at the end. They'll be like, be like, hmm, hmm, this is kind of a good idea. This is an interesting one. And that'll that'll happen, of course, after the season as well. So uh, a fun night of women's basketball last night. The stars will be out. Great job by the uh, NCAA for manipulating the tournament to have this solo night and the stars aligned on on the solo. I, I say that sarcastically, but also, yes, that's what they have to do. That's what it ended up. I mean, it, it, they got their wish. They, they did get their wish. They got their one night. That's for sure. Um, did you how much were you focusing on the gap between the paint on the court and then the three point line that they had to move back from the other night? I was more focused on the referees and where they graduated from. <laughs> We talked about all the snafus with Boy. the women's ga- with the women's tournament over uh, uh, on yesterday's show. I don't have a lot to say on that, but oh boy, if that had been a men's tournament game, <laughs> Chuck and them boys would have had to stall for an hour and a half. You don't think the coaches would have agreed and just you know been like, eh, well, I don't think we've they been w- doing it all. We've been doing it all the four games this way, so why not just keep it going? I don't think they would have been given the game. option. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. But TV rules, and you gotta put it on TV when the, when you say it's gonna I, be on TV. That that's true, and horrible that you put your coaches in that position of we can either make the dimensions of the court right, or you or no one sees your game. Those are your choices. <laughs> Why are those the two choices? Yeah, a couple bad looks. Yeah, a couple bad looks. Bad look in the LA Times. Oh. <laughs> bad look by kim mulkey on various different occasions uh but yeah so. that that got her triggered by the way didn't we have um uh, didn't we have the guy who wrote that on our show the one time when we talked to ucla oh who wrote the la Times story i guess i never looked at that it was uh ben bulch oh yeah yeah that's a friend of the show ben yeah. bulch yeah i believe he had to change the lead into his column hmm Probably the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Curtis writes in on Twitter. Hi, Curtis. Did Connor just combine close only counts and horseshoes and hand grenades into horse grenades? That's right. That is exactly right. It's a line stolen from uh, Andy Dwyer in Parks and Rec. <laughs> I thought it was a good one, so I kept it. I liked it. All right. Uh, we got baseball coming up tonight at the Chuck. I want to talk about the portal a little bit. Um, football as well there was a no hitter in baseball last night anybody notice i did josh is a sicko and he did uh pointed to come on the connor happer show on 1620 the zone live from the host coffee studio this is 1620 the zone welcome to this episode of rv ready brought to you by leach camper sales in council bluffs outdoors leach camper sales has a great website leachcamper.com folks can see what they want and then head out don't forget the coffee's always on there is only one constant in the universe and that's change brent rasmussen of mortgage specialists i'm sure many of you remember the incredibly low interest rates that were available only a few years ago well things changed now rates are higher But would you believe me if I told you there was a time when people were paying double digit rates? And that's the thing, everything changes. Rates go up, rates go down. So if you're waiting for the perfect time when rates drop before you buy a home, you might miss out on the home you really want. So when you think about it, what's a thing today might not be a thing tomorrow. See, change is good. I'm Brent Rasmussen, call me at Mortgage Specialists and we can show you all the details. Mortgage specialists, driven, trusted, reliable. Click mtg-specialists.com. NMLS number 5918, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, everybody. Gary Sharp from Lindley Clothing. People go, hey, Gary, what's your fit? And I usually say, "Mm, not good. But then I go to Lindley Clothing and they say, we can fit you in the best styles. They've been dressing men for over 88 years at Lindley Clothing, service top-notch, and their selection. From sportswear to tailored clothing, they have 
me and you covered. And right now, they have you covered with a new edition of the Linden Clothing Family. It's well suited. You can find out how easy it is to shop for you and someone in your life at well suited top notch staff. They'll help you find exactly what you need for prom or any special event at 132nd and Dodge in the Linden Market. 132nd and Dodge in the Linden Market. You'll find Linden Clothing. Progressive presents good news, bad news, dumb news, then great news. Good news. A letter in your mailbox says you could save money bundling your home and auto insurance with Progressive. Bad news. You saw it after your teenager backed the car into the mailbox. Dumb news. A new mailbox, basically a box on a stick, costs up to 400 bucks. Great news. You decide to see if you could save money bundling at Progressive.com and go with paperless mail instead. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Don't miss this week's zone deal. This week's deal is to Mexitilli Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Hardy. Get $50 in gift certificates for only $25 to Mexitilli Restaurant. Mexitilli Restaurant offers authentic Mexican cuisine with the traditional flavors of your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. Mexitilli Restaurant in downtown Omaha. This week's half off deal. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday. 1620thezone.com. Small business owners, we know tackling your to-do list can sometimes feel like going 12 rounds against a heavyweight champ. Except that heavyweight's gloves are made of something hard, like diamonds. So when a new to-do pops up, you're like, I can't. I'm boxing my diamond boxing glove wearing heavyweight champ of a to-do list. At Progressive, we don't want to make your day any harder. That's why we make it easy with over 30 customizable coverage options. So you can finally land a knockout blow. See if you can save on business insurance in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliated and third-party insurers. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. But we don't speak Spanish. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. Babbel's conversational method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Estoy muy emocionado para ir a España contigo. Aw, he just said, I'm very excited to go to Spain with you. Nos vamos a divertir mucho. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> sí. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Hey, on uh, Censored 1620, second weekend of the the, the tourney. Yeah, who's, who's alive still? Um, so we selected 16 listeners to be paired with 16 teams. Uh, and, of course, the winner walking away with the prize. Each of the final four. So you're in the money right now. Oh, that's now. right. You're in the money. Right now, big exhale. I'd like to give a shout out to our listeners who are still alive for the grand prize. That would be Sarah, who is uh, paired up with UConn. You got to like how you feel, Sarah. Michael is paired up with Alabama. Um, let's see here. Uh, Chuck, who's paired up with NC State. Chuck was probably like, "Damn, I got NC State. I got the worst team left in the field." Yep, <laughs> sorry, you're in the Final Four, and um. Uh, Matthew, who's paired up with Purdue. Okay. Shout out to them. And uh, you're rooting hard for your teams this weekend in the uh, in the final stage. These people have become experts on their team. They're rattling off Indeed. statistics. Transition three-point percentage and defensive acuity in, in a way that no other fan quite knows the numbers. You for. probably subscribe to Kimpod. Yeah. Uh, so... That uh, it's a sweet giveaway, a sweet prize, and uh, if you want to see the uh, the bracket leading up to the uh, culmination of the big tournament this weekend, you can head over to sixteen twenty thezone dot com. Um, Josh, we had some had some news this morning. Actually, it began oh. yesterday. Um, yesterday was April Fool's Day. You picked an interesting day to miss. You picked a great day to miss for a radio host, by the way. 
Josh has gotten got a couple of times. You may have gotten got yesterday. I did get got by one. Was it the entity? Was it? Uh, I got got by one thing as well. Okay. Let's see if we got got by the same thing. Almost assuredly not, but continue. It was the uh, football game on the aircraft carrier that got me for a minute. Oh, <laughs> they, that got me for a minute. I was like, you know what? These schools are just crazy enough for this. To... And that's when I finally realized that it was April Fool's Day yesterday. What got you? Um, so my wife and I, we, we are doctor's orders. We need, we need more protein in our diet. Didn't think that was possible, but okay. we need more protein in our diet. Eat some chicken. Yeah, apparently, we need to have a side of chicken with our beef for dinner. But uh, there was a uh, low like carb seasoning packet that we saw, <laughs> and it advertised 21 grams of protein per serving of seasoning salt which what a bad joke to, to everyone else like oh yeah How's that's possible that's very obviously not real and or possible but i need the protein in my diet so much that i was like i was blinded by this is the exact product i need yeah this is for me <laughs> wow what a horrible april fool's day joke yeah that re- I probably only worked on you. Yeah, it was like seasoning salt. So you ordered grams of protein. You ordered some? No, no. Oh. I, I sent it to my wife and I said, hey, we need to look into this. This looks like <laughs> this, the exact thing we need. And she's like, honey, I'm sorry. So, this is a fake thing. Check the date. Oh, it's 930. I thought everyone was like done joking around. Uh, by the way, I'm excited. Next week, I'll get my uh, my master's package. Oh. Okay. I, I completely forgot about it. I've I've forgotten about it actually six separate times since I ordered it on the show that one day. I thought about it this weekend and I couldn't remember if it was this week or next. It's next week, right? Because the because the final four is this weekend and then it right. goes straight into the Masters. Right. So yeah, I'll get it like midway through next week. Very excited about this. If anybody wants some of my Masters cups, you could buy them off me. Five bucks a pop. Cool. I'll have too many. Okay. Maybe I'll bring some into the office and put on the wall of random. Please. Anyway, on yesterday. Um, you know, we, the brands like to joke around on April Fool's Day. They sure do. And um, what a great bit! They the reason they like to joke around is because they have a good understanding of what the people what the people want, what the people desire, mm-hmm. um, and what it'd be funny to mess with them on. It's like when they play, um, when they play Sweet Caroline at the San Diego Padres games, and then they cut it off midway through and they rickroll you, <laughs> right? All right, that's pretty good. So we figured that Runza was doing exactly this yesterday. Great. Everybody yells at them all the time to release the breakfast runza. Do the breakfast runza. It's it's finally time to do the breakfast runza. And yesterday, they're like, okay, finally, you asked and we listened. April 3rd, you'll be able to taste the notorious breakfast runza. And we thought, oh, very funny, but kind of mean. Everybody wants this. How dare you? And well, well done. Well played. Then they come out with another tweet this morning a few hours ago, and they say, we were not joking. This is a real thing. Now, it will only be a thing for a very, very limited time at a very limited location. If you happen to be in the neighborhood of 56 and Holdridge in Crime Town tomorrow morning, you could stop by at 8 o'clock and have a very limited supply of breakfast runs. I would imagine we should get a live, we should get a man on the scene down there in Lincoln. I'd imagine that the uh, tents are being set up outside the 56 and Holdridge runs already to get in line for the very limited. Now, what is very limited to you, Josh? What does that mean? Uh, a couple hundred? Yeah, a batch. A batch. <laughs> something like that. Like, and they've tweeted out a picture of this breakfast runza. Mm. And I got to say, it doesn't look particularly appealing. Okay. I'm just, I'm I'm just going to say this. I'm glad you said this. And it looks like there's, you know, little chopped up green peppers in there, some eggs. Some a, a big old thing of cheese on top, and then maybe some chopped up ham or red onion. Probably ham. Looks like mostly bread. Yeah, mostly cheese. Yeah, not a lot of uh, stuff. Certainly for a guy who needs more protein, it does not does not look like there's enough protein in so there. So maybe me. this is the bit. Maybe this is the bit here from Runza. They actually put out the breakfast Runza one time, and it sucks. And then people will never ask for it again. Word will eventually get out. Word of mm-hmm. mouth will, will get out, and people will be oh. like, "Oh, uh, yeah, I had it the one time. And it uh, it ain't very good." Maybe that will happen. Oh, okay. I didn't look at the comments. What are the comments saying? What we're saying that this does not look good. Interesting. Kind of thought we were alone on an island there. Okay. 
I thought people would be so blinded by the fin- finally getting the breakfast runs uh, that they would not care. People do care. Yeah, the first response I see is, you have to be kidding. Runza would put out a product that looks terrible. I love Runza. I do too. Runza is one of the best fast food establishments. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been long on the uh, on the train of we need to appreciate Runza, mm-hmm. appreciate them. Great fries, excellent fries, the best. Great burgers mm-hmm. as well, and the Runzas also good. I love a, I love a Runza. Also, sneaky good menu option. The salads, okay. So the breakfast Runza you can uh, you can get tomorrow, but only if you live. I mean, on, only if it's. You know, I, I don't know if there's anybody from Omaha that's going to go out of their way to go to Crime Town just you know to risk their life. Be careful and go to Crime Town and get this uh, breakfast runs it tomorrow. But you better be in line early because that's all. Because they're going to go. Yeah, there's going to be many be angry TikToks about how you waited all night for a breakfast runs that you slept in the parking lot and didn't get one. Mm. Many angry TikToks. Be prepared. It's coming. It's coming your way. Uh, Coming back, we'll talk to Alan Bell of the AB3. We'll get caught up on the uh, basketball from over the weekend. We'll look ahead. Some some pretty big lines here for the Final Four. I see 9.5. I see 11.5. Okay. We got a couple of wagons in the Final Four. We do. And a couple of, uh, I don't know if Cinderella is the right term, but. I don't think Cinderella is the right term for Alabama. Alabama, a uh, surprise, maybe? Uh, yeah, a bit of a surprise. North Carolina State, whatever that is, times a few. Yeah. So, what's the angle? How do you hit it? Do you just, like, let me go to, let me let me just get a preview on this here real quick. So, I, I know you, you know, when we did the show last week from Vegas, I changed my tune on this because I had been saying, like, hey, uh, UConn versus the field. I mean, come on. The numbers just are in your favor here. It's hard to win back-to-back national championships. Oh, but those numbers uh, are not in your favor anymore. Those numbers are um, th- those numbers are definitely not in your favor anymore. So if you'd like to bet UConn to win the national championship, you're likely too late. Minus 185. I took a little flyer on them on the opening day of the tournament. Were they still plus? Yeah. Plus what? Like in the ones? Uh, 250. Okay, that's really good. I nice also, job, Josh. I, I also took Purdue, did a little sprinkle. I believe they were 350. And they're plus 190 right so, now. So, Josh, I mean, you were pretty much locked in for a natty. Yeah. Nice job. I good. know. That's how you do it. Yeah. You should be on the AB3. Well, he's the one who told me, he told me the sprinkle method. And I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to cover the one bet that I lose. Uh, you can go, you, so UConn minus 185 to win the national championship. UConn versus the field you can do yukon minus 184 or the field plus 146 okay um but i would not advise that at this point on the women's side by the way south carolina minus 200 iowa plus 300 yukon plus 700 and nc state plus 1200 i saw a guy you know the 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 betting houses they'll tell you like oh this guy has an interesting bet in let's all root for him Mm -hmm. uh the yukon men's and women's parlay oh i don't know when he placed it and i don't remember how much he bet on the parlay to hit but the uh, the odds were pretty astronomical it's a fifty five thousand dollar payout was it was it more than uh nick's great sports bet from over the weekend did you hear about nick's great sports bet did he bet the rockies to so um i i we went into me and nick went down to the sports book at circa and I I said, Nick, here's what you're going to do. Just grab a whole bunch of these pieces of paper and grab a pen and sit down and I'm going to take you through some things. And we had, you know, all the odds lined up and there was a there was a sheet of paper on the MLB side that said, um, uh, you know, basically your world's a World Series um, parlay, like a pick them exactly. Oh, right? yeah. And he did. <laughs> so he's over Royals. So he scrolled down and he looked and. And I pointed it out to him. I said, Nick, look at this. If you pick the Royals to beat the Rockies or the Rockies to beat the Royals in the World Series, it's plus one million. Are you interested? And he said, For yes, yes, I am. And so if he puts one dollar on that, he'd, he'd be a lot richer than he already is. Mm-hmm. And when he got to the counter, he tried to put one single dollar on it. And and they said, no, you have to pay at least five dollars. <laughs> so five dollars it was. For Nick, five rices for Nick. 
and he will get a return of fifty thousand mm. dollars if the Rockies beat the Royals mm. in the World Series. Uh, I have found which the, is very likely. I think. I absolutely. I mean, just cash that now. He's good for it. I have found the UConn parlay. Uh, I don't know when it was placed, but UConn women to win the title plus five hundred. UConn men to win the title plus twenty two hundred. So maybe this was preseason. Mm. Uh, the parlay is plus 13,700. He put 400 bucks on it. He'll win 55,200 if both Husky teams win the title. Hey, by the way, quick thing here, uh, because we'll, we'll bring this up again later before we get this, before we get to AB here. I uh, just wanted to mention this. Josh, you wrote it on the rundown today with, uh, so a couple of weeks ago, there was a tweet. Uh, it was a fake tweet um, about Ed Cooley resigning from Georgetown. And, Everyone's like, ha, very funny. Um, he would never. And now there's some now there's some real buzz. Now the Big East Twitter is very, very, you know, they they they're on top of things, as we've seen before. Uh Ed Cooley, as of this morning, has deactivated his cameos. Oh my. So whatever that means. Uh also watch out. You cannot uh somebody in Big East Twitter said Go to the Georgetown staff directory, search for Ed Cooley. He's not there. Is that true? Yeah. Did you check this? I have not checked it for myself, but he's got like a video. That feels like something that we should check. It feels, me... feels very checkable, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm on Georgetown basketball right now. Let's Georgetown go. staff directory. Oh, oh. Yeah, because he's still listed as the head coach on their sports website, which is good, by the way. Yes. Hey, we'll keep a very close eye on this. Big East Twitter is going to have to fill me in as well. All right. Uh, we'll come back with AB next on the Counter Hammer Show on 1620 The Zone. You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk, not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Breezy and cool for your Tuesday. Expect cloud cover to stick around the first half of the day. Can't rule out some early spotty drizzle. Expect more sunshine in the afternoon, though there is a slight chance of a late day shower. North winds will continue to gust up to 35 miles per hour with highs in the low to mid 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. More with Connor and Josh after this. We're going to have an extensive professional relationship, my man. On 1620, The Zone. It's spring. Now is the best time to shop at Lenahaw for all things garden or landscape. Our garden center is filled with the largest selection of homegrown plants, flowers, trees, and more. The area's best mulch and soil available for delivery and pickup. Rooted in quality, unmatched value. Lenahaw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding. Now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free, and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. While discounts apply to our regular prices, select style supply, minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. Um, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. Email us on the Equitable Bank inbox with whatever is on your mind. Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. You can get me, Gary, at 1620thezone.com. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. 
For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the rooferies at John Higgins Weather Guard. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Alan Bell, the AB3, on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, we're joined by our good friend Alan Bell, the AB3, driving the line on the 42 Degrees Source Hotline right now. AB, good morning, my friend. How are you? Good. How are we good? I'm fantastic, man. Doing all right? Uh, doing good. So the... Uh, I don't know that it was a Tennessee collapse that ultimately did them in, which is which has got to be heartwarming in the in the NCAA tournament, especially for Rick Barnes. Yeah, right. Like no, I mean Purdue is just a better team. Yeah, I mean you know Zach Eady is uh, a monster. Um, it certainly helps, you know, when he can uh, you know spend six years in the paint. I'm kidding. Yeah, but I'm just kidding. I had to put that out there. Uh, no, I mean Purdue is just a better team. Like, and you know what? Honestly, like that Tennessee Creighton game. Like, I feel like Tennessee and Creighton were. Basically the exact same team. And if you play that game 10 times, you're probably going to get five and five. And then I think both teams probably lose to Purdue. Is that kind of the feeling like did you get over there? I don't know. I, I don't know how it would have shook, shook out with, with Purdue. Um, I, I had said from the beginning that I felt like, um, that, that I felt like Creighton would, obviously we're dealing with like a five out of 10, like you said, a, a, a six out of 10 thing. But I didn't feel like Creighton was like undermatched against anybody, in, in including Purdue in that scenario. I will say this too, AB. Like, if if Tennessee makes the amount of open looks that they made in the Creighton game against Purdue, maybe it's a maybe it's even a different see, result in that game too. That's a great see, that's a great point too. Like Creighton's just a better consistent shooting team. Like Creighton might have had a better. I agree with that completely. You know, and like that's what makes the NCAA tournament so like weird. Like you get so many like crazy weird matchups like as you go. I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, this is though it, it is setting up and assuming. I, I, I know you can't assume, but assuming that we get UConn and Purdue in the final, um, this is setting up for like the a national championship game that I will actually be excited for. Assuming that we, it, it's a it's a final four that I'm excited for anyway. But I do think it sets up for a for a potential national championship game with with probably the two best teams in the country and um you know a, a matchup that like it it'll my, I my guess would be that it'll do a pretty big TV number in comparison to to um other years if it is UConn and Purdue on Monday like I would be excited for that yeah I would too like I think I'm down for any scenario right like I, it wouldn't hurt me if UConn lost to Alabama now I don't think that's gonna happen. But I had not thought a lot of this is going to be like turn was going to happen. You know what I mean? But like, I'm with you. I'm with any of the scenarios that go down. Same thing with the women, right? Yeah. Like, you know who's going to hurt is the NBA. I feel like their ratings are going to drop. Like the women's tournament's doing numbers. The men's tournament's going to do numbers. Like, yeah, I feel like the NBA is going to be the one that's like, hey, we're the ones left out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. I mean, especially during this time of the year when, I mean, yeah, the NBA will get their moment uh, coming up when the when the tournament ends, and then they'll get into the playoffs and and stuff like that. But during this time, yeah, I mean, I haven't heard a peep about anything NBA in in, no. in months. But you bring up a good point too: is that like we're coming up on that weekend that it's like it's a dudes' weekend. You've got the yep. final four, the national championship, and then the Masters, which is awesome. It's the Jim Nance weekend, right? Like that's what it was forever. 
It is. But then it falls off. <laughs> yep. And then and then we yeah. get the random weekends of like, oh look, the Kentucky Derby's here. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. And there's like oh, some random God. spring God. football like, games. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like a couple good uh showcase baseball games that people might be interested in. But then yeah, it's all it's all basically random stuff from from the end of this weekend until I don't know, August, basically. Yep. Totally, man. Totally. Um, so we, like I said, I, I, I would be super excited for a, for a UConn in, in Purdue matchup. I had been sort of throughout the first, especially the first weekend of the tournament. Um, you know, the, the, the topic had always been out there of like, all right, UConn against the field. And we had sort of checked, you know, base on that for the last few weeks of the regular season. You, it, when, when they really kind of became a wagon, basically after they lost to Creighton here in Omaha, it was like, wow. Yeah. Are they, what's, you know, you kind of gets the field, you kind of gets the field, you kind of gets the field. What's the Creighton and Lee shut America? I don't know, man. They, it, it happened again. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I kept saying, man, I just like the odds. Like, give me, give me the field. I think it's hard to win back to back national championships. I think it's hard to do what they've done. And then last weekend came around and <laughs> they did what they did to Illinois in that Elite Eight game. And it was obviously too late at that point, but I thought, yeah, I think I'll take UConn at this point. Then and they're you know they're minus one eighty five to win the national championship right now. It's nuts, man. And like you know the crazy thing is like UConn's not even doing this offensively either, right? Like they're just stopping everyone else. Like they've got another couple of octaves that they can go if they need to. I mean, this team is just they're just so well coached, man. Like yeah. say what you will about Hurley, like they are just they're just a, they're just a different team, but. You know what, man? Like, Zach Eady is a problem, dude. Like, he, he's good enough and, and different enough that all you need is one win. All you need yep. is one game. I'm with you, man. It's going to be good. I was going to ask you, too, because um, I, I talked about this a little little bit last week, and, and we're sort of close with it, Um, and, and we have, you know, a couple matchups with, with UConn, you know, every, every year. And there was yeah. even a thing in Omaha this year where Hurley started yelling at all the – all the people in the student section after Creighton won the game and they stormed the court and everything. I cannot find it in me and I can't, I can't exactly pinpoint why I cannot find it in me to hate him. I can't, I can't no. like, obviously when, they, when they, when they're playing Creighton, it's a different thing. Um, but they are, they are a very unique team in that they're so dominant and they're so talented and they're like the best at, at every, you know, every sort of category that you can pick. But I don't dislike them. I actually kind of want them to win, and I can't. I can't exactly figure out why. And I, yeah. I, I, I. But I'm interested to hear if like other people feel the same way about them. Yeah, I, I'm the exact same way. And I'll tell you, at least for me, it's because they're quiet. You don't see. It's not you know like when when John Calipari was at Kentucky, right? Like it was just constant. All of this madness. They're everywhere. They're all over ESPN. John Wall's dancing like. UConn does none of that. Like, I, they don't speak. Their players don't speak. Hurley, like, I'm with you. I, I'm good on the yelling at, you know, other students. But, like, other than that, dude, they're just old school, like, hard coaching. And they just they just follow the plan. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's very likable. I completely agree. Yeah. They, absolutely likable. They, yeah. I think it's rare that you have a team who's that talented and, like, one to five, and they're going to have NBA guys, and, like, they – you know, they're personnel wise, they're they're just as good, if not better, than everybody else at all their positions. But yeah. oftentimes you'll see teams like that and they'll they'll sleepwalk through a game and you know, they will whatever it might be for them. They have this edge to them all the time that I think is super endearing. Like they always they always play at or above what their what their personnel says that they're supposed to be. I think that's really cool. Like I and, th- and maybe that's part of the reason why I can't kind of bring you know myself to hate him. Yeah, no, no, I'm with you. You know what it is? Because it's it's actually rare in sports where the coach matters, the coaching matters. It kind of reminds us, like, you know, when we were kids, whether, like, your dad was the coach or whoever, right? To where it's like, they're kind of on your tailgate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, it kind of brings you back. You're like, I, I actually really respect this. Like, I don't know if me and, you know, Danny Hurley would be buddies outside, but, like, <laughs> I respect everything that he's doing. I'm with you, man. Like it, 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 it's a very likable trait. 
it's 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 fun to watch. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be in the locker room. I wouldn't want to be on the in, on the practice floor practicing with them because it'd be the hardest no, that's thing the ever. Reason why they don't talk? Like, <laughs> they all understand completely the ramifications if anyone says a word. Uh, how have you uh, How have you consumed the first week here of uh, Major League Baseball action? What have you been in on so far? Well, the Atlanta Braves just continue to hit. Like that's what they do. They just continue to go. No, I thought it's right then. Like we've seen nice runs. Oh, it's usually, you know, we could see really, really slow starts. Um, I, I think that we've seen, you know, some some nice, you know, offensive action, especially with, quite frankly, really inclement weather across the country. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we dealt with that already, and we're still seeing, you know, pretty good run production. I, I think Major League Baseball. It's, I think it's going to be a fun year. Like, you've got some good teams or some good storylines, but it kind of feels like there is parity out there to be had. Yes, you're going to have the Dodgers and the Braves, you know, that have 100 win totals, you know, expected, the, the Astros, teams like that. But, like, I feel like this is going to be a really fun season, man. So I, I've been happy. I've been pleasant with it. I mean, same deal with college baseball. Look, we were just talking about Frank a second ago, and not to put the jinx out there, but Creighton is what twenty and four. Twenty and four, and have not lost back to back games all year long. Like mm. they are just a wagon of consistency, and I, I, I can't wait to find like those teams in Major League Baseball. They're exact same way. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a big one tonight in Omaha, Nebraska, and Creighton. Nebraska is yeah. twenty and five. Creighton's twenty and four. It's the it's like these two teams play each other three times every year. Um, and this is this is the one, the first one in a while where they've both been, you know, pretty much at the top of their game. I'm, I'm excited for this one tonight, too. Any uh, any edges on that? Yeah, crazy. I'm taking food. I'm taking food. <laughs> something not to. And I think it was, it's, it's Butler series this weekend, right? Uh, yes, Butler, yeah. Yeah. So Butler gives up some others. And he twists one, too. Uh, you know, just any outside of this book and anybody, you know, that's got a bunch of guys on college baseball. He can give up runs, and Butler can give up runs. Like, he's going to be home, but yeah, you're right, man. Great Nebraska. That's going to be a good one. I can't wait. Yeah, I think, well, if if the weather, it's it's a little dreary outside right now. It's a little chilly, but if we get some cooperative weather, that'd be like probably 15,000 people there tonight, which is... That's awesome. Yeah. That's what I love, man. It's like, dude, you guys are all about sports. Like, that's what I love about Tennessee. You know what I mean? It's not always great, but right. like it, it, this is what it's about, man. Like people show up. That's awesome. Yep, they're gonna they're gonna suffer through it. Um, all right, so UConn minus eleven and a half, Purdue minus nine and a half. Do you like either of those lines for Saturday? Yeah, I, look, I'm gonna go UConn. Um, I, I, they they give me no reason to stop betting on them. I'm waiting for Alabama, who's played way over their heads. I'm gonna say that disrespectfully. Um, I, you come just if you come, man. You know what they do? Like they're not nervous at all. I'm fascinated with NC State to do with Purdue. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna roll with UConn if I had to pick one spread over the other. What about you? Um, because those are big numbers, man. But like, that's the hard part. That's yeah, good. it's it's hard because I could definitely see a path for Alabama. They'll have to play really well. Um. I just don't like. I don't think there's a world where UConn doesn't play well. Like that's where you would yeah. be trying to guess on them a little bit. So I, I guess I'd go with UConn, but I'm not convinced on either. I just hope that we get. So maybe like to will it into existence, you go with both of the favorites, and then hope they, you know, and then they play each other in the national championship game. I guess that's where my head's at. See, now we're talking. That's exactly it. That's the plan right there. Yep. All right, AB. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. We'll we'll get into uh, the end of the the end of the season because it'll be the night after or the day after the national championship game, and then um, and then into the Masters, and then we'll probably tail off a little bit for a while. <laughs> you know what? Hey, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I look forward to it, buddy. There you go. Thanks, AB. See you, bud. Al Bell of the AB three. He's but we could you know we could call him. We could talk to him anytime about anything. But that's the beauty of that's the beauty AB, of Al Bell. He's got takes need, on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder I should have asked him about his takes on the breakfast runza idea. Yeah, he's all in on the runza. I was wondering if his area had like this is the place that all the locals, the place you go, flock to that just hasn't really popped nationally. Yeah. Um. All right. We'll take a quick time out here first. Little news out of 
Creighton. Creighton. Uh, yeah. How about this? Creighton women's uh, basketball player Emma Ronsick is going into the portal, which is a little surprising. I mean, that she's part of the group that's been around for three, four years now. Um, Matt Damarinas, who we'll have on at the um, at, at twelve thirty, he says this. Um, her decision was always an intriguing one, given how close she is with her sister. A Ronsick reunion somewhere wouldn't shock me. It would oh. also be a cool way to go out. Uh, interesting. So um, that's a surprising one, I think, for Creighton, who Flan said after they lost to UCLA in the in the round of 32 there, like, eh, you know, I think we got a chance to bring a lot of them back. So we'll mm-hmm. see what happens. So um, that would that's that's an intriguing loss uh, for the Jays. I will come back. Josh has the odd news when we return on 1620 The Zone. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station again and again and again. 1620 The Zone. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialist. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circa Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. When it comes to protecting your home, J. Stennett Contracting takes pride in ensuring every detail is handled. Roofing, siding, gutters. When it comes to the exterior of your home, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. Have you noticed stains on your ceiling this winter? With storm season around the corner and the damage it can bring, let J. Stennett Contracting ensure that your roof is durable and holds up against the weather this spring and summer. When you need an honest assessment, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. JSCRestoration.com The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source. By your mom's house. You guys just didn't want it bad enough. That should have been an easy win. What were you doing out there? You got to hustle. You could have made that play if you'd been open. On the car ride home after the game, when you think you're helping by telling me what I did wrong and what I need to work on, all I hear is that I'm not good enough, that I'm supposed to be perfect, that it's not okay to lose. On the car ride home, all I need to hear is how much you love me and enjoy watching me play, that my worth isn't determined by my performance, that even on my worst day, I am worthy, that you see me learning, growing, and doing my best, and that is enough. This message presented by the NSAA and the Nebraska State Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Progressive presents good news, bad news, dumb news, then great news. Good news. A letter in your mailbox says you could save money bundling your home and auto insurance with Progressive. Bad news. You saw it after your teenager backed the car into the mailbox. Dumb news. A new mailbox, basically a box on a stick, costs up to 400 bucks. Great news. You decide to see if you could save money bundling at Progressive.com and go with paperless mail instead. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Odson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with Odd Son. Odd news, Odd Son. See what we did there? The Odd News with Odd Son. Okay, Josh, it is time for the Odd News. Hello, welcome back. Welcome back to yourself. Are yeah. you welcoming back yourself? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Also, because we had the odd news yesterday, it just wasn't with Odd Yeah, was it? Was it good? It was great. Okay. 
It's mm. awesome. You got a standard to live up to. Tough road to hoe. You, uh, you set the standard, and the people who fill in for you have to li- live up to it, mm-hmm. and then you have to live up to that standard. Uh, uh, iron sharp, sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Raise the bar. Let's talk about April Fool's Day yesterday. It is a holiday for corporate brands to prank their customers. Yes. Uh, Duncan changed their name, quote unquote, changed their name to Donuts instead of Duncan. Sure. Very funny. Very funny. Um, uh, uh, Ollie Pop. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a soda brand. I am. They, oh, okay. Yep. Uh, they, Not me. My wife. <laughs> they uh, announced a, a merger with Pringles that they're going to create a sour cream and onion soda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 7 Eleven uh, had cans of hot dog sparkling water, which did create the great uh, glizzy flavored fizzy mm-hmm. jokes. Nice. Um, Omaha Steaks, our own Omaha Steaks. How would they do? They did a, uh, a meaty spritz spray, which promised to infuse bland fast foods with the taste of world famous steaks, chicken and pork. That's awesome. I would actually buy that. Uh, Fruity Pebbles announced a collaboration with Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, PepsiCo and uh, Extra Flaming Hot Chips said that they were going to have a uh, flaming hot milk. You know another reason that these aren't funny anymore. It's because uh, products like this are made every single day just for <laughs> for this exact reason to get people talking about it. Yeah. Like we have so many products that are like I could see all of these actually happen. Like the mac and cheese ice cream. Yes. That like, everyone's like, oh, my gosh, they got it. I have to I have to buy four cases of it because they never have it. Exactly. Because people flock towards it. Uh, the one that I found to actually be. I'm going to say the funniest, not necessarily funny. Um, scotch brand, uh, tape. Yes. Scotch they, tape. They, they, re- do? they released a scotch brand scotch. <laughs> like, okay, that's it's pretty good. That's pretty good. Once again, I could see it though mm-hmm. in this world where there's everything everywhere all the time. <laughs> uh, I don't make it scotch scotch. That's right. Uh, story number two, clear delineation. Cause it's kind of the same general story. It's a recap of April Fool's Day. Uh, did you watch Wheel of Fortune yesterday? Connor? God, no. I hate that. <laughs> oh, show. that's right. That's right. Uh, did you watch Jeopardy, by the way? I, I, I'm i getting caught up. Okay. So I am I like to watch them in chronological order. Great take by you. And no spoilers then. Yeah. Please, please don't. Although I'm a little triggered. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm a little triggered by all of the tournaments. Well, that's the actor's strike. and the. Can we get back to regular Jeopardy? Yeah. I just want to meet new people Would every day. That. Had a fan favorite on yesterday as a nice surprise. Um, I did watch the end of the, I just, I, we got through the end of the tournament of champions last week. Um, and what that was a, that was an epic battle between it was. three, three epic players. It was, I, I forget the guy, the guy's name, but I really liked him who won. Uh, yeah, you got, we gotta be careful. Yeah. That's Shoot. what, that's what I realized in real time. And I'm glad you heard that. Yeah. Uh, no, Jeopardy, apparently you have to be specific. Jeopardy. A lot of tournament, tournament of champions out there. Food Network's running one right now. They're at the final four. Why in the heck would this? Oh, oh Yogesh. 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 That guy was awesome. I liked Yogesh. He was fun. Well, on Wheel of Fortune yesterday, uh, you know, the, the show opens. Everybody cheers. Vanna White comes out. <laughs> well, I hate Pat Sajak. He sucks. Well. He wasn't there yesterday oh, for, good. The, for the start uh, of the show. I might have liked it. Jared Leto walked out with uh, Vanna White, and the show did not acknowledge why <laughs> or how. That's or, a good joke. Or anything. Uh, they did one. They got to introduce the contestants. They did one spin of the wheel, and then there was a cut, and Pat Sajak was back. And they, again, did not acknowledge April Fool's Day or that this was a joke or that this was a bit. It just happened. That's funny. I appreciate that. I have gained some respect from Wheel of Fortune because they kicked off Pat Sajak, even if it was a joke. And then I'm going to read you this article word for word. All right. It's no secret Jared is a Wheel of Fortune fan. He and his brother Shannon appeared as contestants back in November to announce their band's 2024 tour. 
Mm. A lot to unpack there. I did not know that they that. were Wheel of Fortune fans. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Monday's hosting shakeup was just a prank for April Fool's Day, but a real change is coming this fall when Ryan Seacrest replaces Pat Sajak when the 41st season of Wheel of Fortune comes to a close. Next season will be hosted by Ryan Seacrest. That's fine. I'm still not watching it. I did. It's it's not really it's not really say Jack for me. It's just the show. It's just the premise of the show. It's not fun. It doesn't take any skill. You just spin a wheel. The prizes aren't that cool. It's very easy. I finish this word. I will walk up to that line with you where the prizes are still kind of lame. Yeah, it's like great. You won three hundred dollars. It, it's or or a cruise. Or yeah. like, oh, you want an old people's cell phone. Good job. Yeah. Um, yes. Finally, we had some great basketball action in Albany last night. A lot of people. Many celebrities. Uh, Travis Scott. Said Travis it, Scott just loves women's basketball. Travis Scott said it was going to be the illest. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, many people are now now know that Albany is, in fact, not the illest. Um <laughs> In fact, it might make you ill. There was there, There's an unknown stench wreaking havoc in the city of Albany right now. The foul odor, described as a ghastly combination of urine and flatulence, has been offending noses across the capital region since September. The State Department of Environmental Conservation was recently enlisted to uh, solve the mystery. The intensity seems to vary depending on weather and seems to linger throughout the North Albany neighborhood. Common council member Kelly Kimbrough called the odor rancid and said part of the problem in finding the source is that it's not constant, and it comes and goes. Unsurprisingly, we all seem to be downwind from the Capitol, uh, said Councilman Joe Borelli. Nice. Uh, the, chief, joke. the chief suspects are a nearby composting facility, low tide from nearby lakes or the famously very clean Hudson River, and the county's water purification and sewage treatment plant. I'd start there, personally. Yeah, that's probably the the source. Uh, The sewage treatment plant is less than a mile from the North Albany neighborhood. Is this where our poop smell emanates from? When it smells like poop around here for a couple weeks? I usually blame the Kansas or Canadian wildfires. I think you probably have a tough time getting here from Albany with the wind, but you know, you never know. You never know. It seems to be wreaking havoc over there, and they have no idea where to look. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I did not hear good reviews on Albany. No, I believe uh, Rebecca Lobo, currently under fire for besmirching the good name of Albany. Yeah, good luck finding something to do in Albany, I believe was the line from oh. her. I've been to the airport in Albany. There was a pay phone there, and I took a picture of it because... I hadn't seen a payphone in years. Uh, Josh, why'd you go to the Albany airport? Uh, I was driving uh, into the Berkshires in uh, Massachusetts. Okay. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I know. I know rich people. I am not rich. You do know rich people, though. Mm-hmm. That's good enough for me. Yeah. Association with it. That's all I need. All right, Josh. Appreciate it. Thank you, Connor. That is the odd news. Uh, we will come back the noon hour still to come. Matt Dear Marinus will join us at the bottom of the hour. Jacob Bigelow at one on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. The Connor Happer Show. Follow us on Twitter at Happer Show for all the latest news and views. We may even say something interesting once in a while. Unlikely. Really, guys? Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Welcome to this episode of... RV Ready, brought to you by Leech Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Mother Nature? We're getting things ready for everyone to head out camping again. People should go to leechcamper.com and check out the inventory. And don't forget, the coffee's always on. Small business owners, we know tackling your to-do list can sometimes feel like going 12 rounds against a heavyweight champ. Except that heavyweight's gloves are made of something hard, like diamonds. So when a new to-do pops up, you're like, I can't. I'm boxing my diamond boxing glove-wearing heavyweight champ of a to-do list. 
At Progressive, we don't want to make your day any harder. That's why we make it easy with over 30 customizable coverage options. So you can finally land a knockout blow. See if you can save on business insurance in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliated and third-party insurers. Howdy! Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time. Time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Mexitli Restaurant by Chef Alberto Cardenas offers you an authentic Mexican cuisine experience with the traditional flavors of your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. At Mexitli Restaurant, they offer you the experience of tasting Mexico in every bite. The best tacos, birria, quesadillas, and more. Visit them at Mexitli Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Harney, and look them up on Facebook at Mexitli Restaurant or call 531-772-0550 to order. Watching a ball game at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscar's offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold, frosty one, Oscar's Pizza, or award-winning char-buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no-brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd at West Center Road, and takeout at 162nd in Maple. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Hey, so the Astros threw a no-hitter last night. Did you Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? I did see it. I did hear about it. But I, I fear that I was the only one. I think that's right. Um, do you remember when the last no-hitter was? Uh, September of last year. Um, was it a Yankee? It was. The, now, the last non-combined no-hitter. Yeah, real no-hitter. Real no-hitter, as we refer to them as. It was August 9th by Michael Lorenzen. Remember when Michael Lorenzen threw a no-hitter? Is that that Yankee guy? Uh, no. Oh. He was a Philly at the time. Mm. He started the year as a Toledo mud hen. Oh, yeah, He's yeah. Philly. That, that story rings a bell. Now, the Astros broke a very long streak of uh, time, you know, most time spent without a no-hitter. For them, it was... Let me do the math here. Eight months. Oh, my. What a tortured history the Astros have. Yeah, Framber Valdez threw a no-hitter also in August of last year. Hmm. So what happens is they, they tend to, to come in bunches, right? Right. So if you're if you're interested, like maybe take a look. Maybe there's you know a matchup that you like. Or I don't know anybody that would have thought that Ron L. Blanco would have thrown a no hitter last night. Not the guy I would have first went to. No. Probably not. But if you're you know if you're interested, I mean the odds are that there's going to be another no hitter in probably within a week. Right in 2021, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven no hitters. Mm. 
and six of them took place in a six week stretch. Okay. Four of them took place in a two week stretch. Four of those no hitters took place oh. in a two week stretch. We had four weeks, or we had two weeks, four no hitters in May of 2021. I mean, you can look at whoever the A's are playing, whoever the White Sox are playing, whoever the Rockies are playing. But would you have thought the Blue Jays would no, have got no hit last night? No. The Blue Jays are supposed to be pretty good, right? Yeah. And if even if you don't think that they're good, they at least have sluggers. Also, I wonder what the math is on like I wonder what the the most the the biggest month with the most no hitters is, month of the season. I would imagine it's April. Right. It, yeah, everybody's still rusty, you right? Get, well, you get you got that. You got cold weather. Guys uh-huh. don't want to hit, mm-hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden it gets away from them a little bit. Late. Those are usually better pitching conditions. Now, with that being said, last night's no hitter took place in Houston, where there's a dome and they don't have bad weather at all. So um, maybe that thought is out the window. But my hypo- hypothesis would be that it is April. Josh, my- do you remember the last perfect game we had? That was the one you were thinking. Oh, about. was that a Yankee? That was Domingo Herman. Yeah, yeah. Last year, yes, 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 yes. Uh, June twenty eighth last year. Might I suggest uh, Atlanta Braves pitcher Ronaldo Lopez going up against his former team, the White Sox, in cold, rainy Chicago oh, today? The White Sox are quite bad, Josh. They are. I watched them yesterday. They played a day game. Is there any day baseball on today? No. Sad. Three ten is our first game. Twins Brewers. Spoiler alerts for what to watch. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Should we talk? So, I mean, th- this could be a nice little uh, transition into baseball for tonight. Then, yeah, yeah. Like, Are you? Does this does this feel like it smacked you upside the head with Creighton and Nebraska baseball talk all of a sudden? Because we were we were knee deep into into basketball, and I mean, we were all over it. And now we've been, you know, we've been in multiple places in the country, and um, now it's like, all right, just kidding. Everything comes to a screeching halt, and it's time to focus on. Creighton and Nebraska baseball. So I find the timing to be incredibly advantageous. The second yep. Creighton season is over, hey, the baseball team is good. They're hosting Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Why don't you come on down? Come on out. And you can't find it on TV unless yeah. you pay for the Flow Sports. The flow Sports. Radio is going to have a great call. I think this will be really good. I, I've, I've seen Creighton up close and personal a bunch this year. I've watched Nebraska a bunch this year. I know that both teams are good. I think Nebraska has built it in the Will Bolt way. I think they do the little things really well. They take extra bases. They bunt a little bit. They've added the pitching piece this year. Mm-hmm. Shout out Rob Childress, who was a guest on the morning show this morning. That feels like a sustainable way of doing things. They might not have superstars, but they do have Sears, and they do have Karen, and that's you know that's enough. I think for a Will Bolt led baseball team, what's the ceiling of that team? I don't know. You know, is that is that a team that's going to get hot and make a run into the to the second weekend? I don't know. Um, but is it a good Big Ten baseball team? Yes, absolutely. I believe that about Nebraska so far. For Creighton, they've started off really well, and the knock on them obviously is they've played a crap schedule. They have. It's the truth. Now, I will mention this: they're starting to get healthy again. They've been doing that while being beat up from an injury perspective. Their their second Hello. their second starter hasn't been pitching the majority of the year. He's just now getting getting back into things in in Jack uh um and Chad Sainer. Uh Nolan Clifford went down with an injury a couple weeks ago. He's back in the lineup. Jack Grace went down with an injury a couple weeks ago. He's getting back into the lineup. Hogan Haligso had an injury. He's been worked back into the lineup for a couple weeks now. They have good bats, good steady bats at the top of the lineup. And there's some real potential for depth in their lineup if those other pieces stay consistent. I think both teams are good, and I think both teams are at-large teams. And I know I know both of their schedules haven't necessarily, you know, wouldn't point to like, oh man, these teams are gonna be good and, and nationally relevant at the end of the year. Obviously, like, you know, you can only do so much. Um you know, and and they'll judge you on your RPI and all this other stuff. But like, it's hard to say no to a, it's hard to say no to a forty win team, right? 
when you get to the NCAA tournament. And that's what both of these teams might be because I think I expect them to, to be both at the top of their leagues or near the top of their leagues as you go on throughout the season. And so we're talking about 40-plus win teams here in the state. I'm really looking forward to that May matchup when they play mm-hmm. each other. That'll be, I mean, that'll be a ton of fun. There could be a bunch on the line. I've said this before about Creighton and their schedule. It's not getting any less crappy. <laughs> right, right. They play Big East baseball schedule. Yeah, and there's a couple good teams in there. Yeah, um, Georgetown. But they, they've challenged themselves a little bit, and I think they got kind of, you know, the one year Stanford sucks. Yeah, man. You know, they go out there and have a nice comeback win and a late inning win, and then they take a loss. But like they have taken care of business. They mm-hmm. they have done what they've needed to do so far. Um, even with the schedule being the way it is. And it's really the same thing with Nebraska, although they do have a couple like attractive wins on their schedule. When you watch the game tonight, if you watch, if you go down to the ballpark, shout out Flow Sports, or you just go down to the yard tonight. It'd be nice if they got a great crowd. You know, if they got they got ten, fifteen thousand in the building tonight and got a little buzz in there. Um, you know, I was talking to Ed Service. A couple weeks ago before the game, and um, you know, we we just basically just traded stories about old old school Creighton Nebraska games, and he and he just lamented like, "Hey, I I I loved those games. Like they were so much fun. We didn't like each other, and um, that was the whole thing. But we we specifically talked about the one game uh, at Rosenblatt when it was so cold the day that Dana Altman went to Arkansas, <laughs> and there was just like this." <laughs> this like buzz in the crowd, you know, the video of, uh, you know, when the Mets and the Phillies were playing each other and they got bin Laden and there was just like a buzz in the crowd. It was kind of like that, but it was not like that, you know? So That's was, right. Is that too the far? Arkansas AD walked out and said, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got him. Yeah. And then they didn't. And then they didn't. And then Dana came back. Um, we but did get bin Laden. Though. We did indeed get bin Laden. No conspiracy theories on this side of things. Um, but I, you know, we, we, each, I think if you're a kid growing up and you're in the baseball community around here, you grew up going to those games, right? Like you, you just grew up going to those games because they were fun. And, um, you know, everybody, depending on what age you are, um, you know, remembers whichever dudes from whichever team, um, during whichever period that you were in. And I, I will say this when you watch them tonight. And if you're, so if you're a kid growing up, and you're looking forward to tonight's game for some reason. Um, I, I think when you watch tonight, you'll notice this. You might notice how these teams look really similar from a physical perspective. They, they are, um, you know, Creighton's probably about as physical, as big of a team as, as I've seen them. We think Creighton baseball, you think one thing, and it's like, hey, they're going to bunt, and they're going to play defense, and they're going to run, and they're going to, you know, they're going to sprint out to their positions and stuff like that, and they're going to pitch it. Um, and they're going to have 400 pitchers that go through in a midweek game. And I, they, they're just built. Their personnel is, um, doesn't necessarily dictate that right now. They're, they're bigger. And so what you'll see tonight is Creighton square around a lot to bunt because Nebraska knows that, hey, look, like they're going to, you know what they're trying to do here. They, we got they got two guys on in the first inning. Here comes a three hole hitter. It doesn't matter. He's not going to hit over the wall. He's going to bunt it. And so what you'll see is in that situation, Creighton square to bunt, and they'll pull it back. And that that's that's been happening a lot this year, and it sets them up for some okay. success to put pressure on teams defensively. And that's always what they want to be about. But you'll notice how they look physically, um, pretty similar. And that never used to be the case. You know, Nebraska could have the dudes that would kind of tower over the Creighton guys. Obviously, you know there would be good games in between. Um, but like I said, I think they're both NCAA tournament teams at this point. Um, and I think it should be fun tonight at the old yard. It's always, it's always fun when they get together and it'll be, while it doesn't mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, you, you, you want to get on that, that edge. It's a good win for whoever gets it in a schedule that doesn't have a ton of those on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and. And I hope that um, I hope the bragging rights thing comes back a little bit. Yeah, you know, we we get a little bit of that old school. Feel. It, it, maybe it'll take it takes both of them being good to kind of say it's a rivalry. I mean, we don't need to talk about what a what makes a rivalry and what not doesn't make a rivalry. But like if they're both good, there's some juice to it. They both want it a little bit more, and uh, you can kind of plant your flag wherever you want it. So that's um, 
uh, that's what's on the line tonight. I think this, it'll be fun. This game is a little more fun when both teams got a little bit of bleep you in them. No doubt about it. Uh, from Cody on Twitter. Hi, Cody. The J Tech Constructions on Twitter feed. He says, I'll be at the Husker versus Creighton game for my birthday with seven of my closest friends and my wife. Oh, happy birthday, Cody. Happy birthday, Cody. Seven of your closest friends and your wife. That's nine tickets. Well, your wife is your best friend. Yeah, does the does the wife get included? No, she. Seven of the closest friends. Is it seven of the closest friends and my wife? Maybe he doesn't. That sounds separate. That sounds separate outside of the seven. Just an observation. That's all. Also, many are asking for Connor's prediction. Okay. On the number of pitchers we will see tonight. Is all of them an answer? No. Damn. Uh, I don't think you'll see all of them. Screen's got a game to play tomorrow. That's right. And they got three more to play this weekend as well. Um, but it's Butler. So they're going to go VTOC tonight. Creighton's going to go with VTOC, and um, Nebraska's going to go with Walsh. I the, the, the general line that we usually get, like the general, um, you know, the way that they approach it is like, hey, can we get the first pitcher to get us three outs, and then we'll go from there. But they they haven't been afraid to kind of go from there. I don't think that'll be the case tonight. But obviously, if it gets murky in those first couple innings, then you're going to be quick to to make moves. Um, I don't feel ooh. so. Grand total pitchers. Am I? And you're asking me to set the line, or am I? You're asking me to take the over under on a previously set line. Uh, why don't you set the line? You seem you're very knowledgeable on the situation. Let's go. Um, let's go eleven. Okay. Um, eleven. Eleven and a half. That is the line. Is that is that okay? It has been set. I'm hearing twelve is a number I've heard from several different people. Okay. So. Eleven and a half. That's okay. what I'll do. There was uh, there was they were talking in my mentions earlier. Um, Brent said. The combined number early line at 13 and a half. Oof. How do we feel? Um, John said, I recall a similarly high number last year prior to game one, and we got crushed by the under. Um, oh, okay. Chris r- wrote in on that. He said, I feel like Nebraska's staff is in a much better spot than last year. They clearly haven't had the midweek messes they've had. I'd go with the under. And Bruns just says, that's just more arms to mix and match. <laughs> Uh, Chris said, thought that too. I don't know Creighton situation very well, but I bet Nebraska starter goes at least four, maybe five. Mm. Uh, and as long as they continue to throw strikes, they have, uh, like they have, I think that puts their pitcher use at five to six. It's definitely close, but I still go under. All right. How about I just take that number down now? They'll, they'll talk it out today on the, uh, on the program as well, but let me, let me hit you with a little 11 and a half and I'll toss that to them in the crossover. And we'll see. They'll swish it around a little bit. We'll see if they like it, and then we could we could adjust from there. But we'll okay. tentatively set it at eleven point five. I like this. Okay, so we're gonna do it. Numbers move. They're allowed to move. Uh, John emails in on the Equitable Bank inbox. Hi, John. John, subject line: Cody is birthday. Cody related to Vegas. Cody. I hope not. <laughs> I don't like that Cody. People forget it's the White Castle incident. I don't think that Cody was involved, by the way. Hope not. Which is good. Uh, one more thing before we get to Dean Marinas here. Uh, there is a big vote in Jackson County, Missouri today. Big vote. Huge. Big vote. Big shoes. Um, now, they don't want more money. They just want to continue to get the same amount of money. And they'll use that money to build a new downtown baseball stadium, which I am under the assumption will pass. I've heard, I have heard way more like yes, yes, yes on this than than no, no, no. Obviously, there are the dissenters, but um, you know because they say, well, you need the three eight cent tax, uh, and you already have a Super Bowl. You know, like you're gonna make more improvements, and, and the answer is yes. Like we are, we're gonna yes. try and make this a better experience he's, for you. He's the worst owner in the <laughs> National Football League, right? And so it would go to the Royals and it'd go to the Chiefs. The Royals would use their their part to uh, build a new downtown baseball stadium, or at least a piece of it. Now, 
The problem is, if for some reason this does not pass today, we go back to the drawing board, and then you'll start to really hear their talk ramp up about the Royals potentially leaving town, which is a threat that the team could always use, and especially an owner as new as John Sherman is, he could always use. I hope we do not get to that point. Um, but it's on the line today, Josh. Oh my. Now I've heard some people who are at the polls already in Kansas city and Jackson County who have showed up in Royals and chiefs gear and have been told that they cannot wear their Royals and chiefs gear, but that is actually not true. They can wear Royals and chiefs. Gear, they can. And that's what the Royals want you to know. As of today, <laughs> tell them to bleep off. I can wear my Bobby Witt Jersey wherever I'd like to. Even if it's the polls, that guy had a good start, by the way, uh, he has two home runs two days. The 88 year olds working the polls <laughs> might see a Royals Jersey as advertising for one of the quote unquote candidates uh-huh. at the polls. Now, this is not a, this is not a regular election. We're right. not electing people. Here. Right. We're just talking about sales tax. Yeah. So I, I guess I understand the confusion, but also. Back the hell off. Like, the Chiefs, no one cares. Out of this potential yes vote today in Jackson County, have proposed an eight hundred million dollar renovation of Arrowhead Stadium, of which they would contribute three hundred million dollars toward, and then they would get some of the three eight cent tax as well to improve Arrowhead when the Royals move out and there is an implosion in a couple of years. Yeah, can we work that in? Like, I want you to bring this back put it back on the ballot with a voting on an implosion like you we must do an implosion we're legally binding you to an implosion yeah that'd be nice that'd be nice if that was written into the bill here i haven't gotten sentimental about this yet but i haven't been to a game yet this year but I, we still have like three more years left at the ballpark so <laughs> not uh i'm not in my feels yet about the k but this is going to pass the rose going to have a nice new downtown stadium or they're going to move and i'm going to be <laughs> And then I'm going to be left out in the wilderness like Michael Brunts. But they could be the Montreal Expos again. That would be sad. Very. It would, actually. Uh, Charles writes in. Hi, Charles. Yeah, Gladys. I'll wear my Freddie Fermin jersey wherever I want. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Matt says, I think Kaufman is one of the gems of Major League Stadiums. I don't understand the need to move downtown. Um, it's they, They've done a lot to it. Uh, you know, they did the whole big renovation in 2009 with the outfield. They've made it look nice. I, I think, you know, I, don't, I, be, I, am, I believe the Royals and John Sherman when he tells you that this stadium is kind of untenable um, going forward. And I think mostly what he's talking, he's not, not, he's not talking about the field. He's not talking about how it looks. I think he's talking about some of the, uh, some of the guts of it on the inside. And um, I think, you know, ease of access and concessions and things like that. It's a lot of like kind of back of house stuff that it would take a lot of money to overhaul. They, they've quoted the, the Royals have said, and I don't know if this is true or not, but they'll tell you this. The Royals have said, Hey, it's going to be a billion dollars to renovate the deal. So why not just continue on with the three, eight cent tax and then we'll build you a damn new ballpark and it'll be nice. Trust me. I think everybody will be happy about this when it's done. There will be a lot of consternation about it in the meantime, but when it's done, I think everybody will be happy about it. That's my that's my two cents. Um, and as Travis says, I do love a downtown ballpark. Oh my gosh, do I love a downtown oh, ballpark? Yeah. It's little, beautiful. Little village around it that the owner can own, all the shops. You get the views, you get the walking. Um, good for the economy. Hurts nobody. We love the economy. As one man once said. Uh, let's take a quick phone call here from Tony on the 42 degrees of source hotline before we get to uh, D Marinas here. Hey, Tony, what's up? Hey, so if they do implode the stadium, then, then that means the Chiefs have a spot they could build on and then use their stadium. So is that the ultimate goal here is to build Kansas City Chiefs a new stadium? No, get the Royals out of there? No, they're going to they're gonna revamp, air, like they're going to keep the existing Arrowhead and make okay. a lot of improvements to it. And then basically the idea for what they would build over Kauffman Stadium, the existing site, is like Chiefs Town, basically, where it's like a shopping okay, center you. and, you know, all that kind of gotcha. stuff. Now, where downtown is the ballpark going to go? It's in the Crossroads District. Um, 
if if you know where that is, it's just uh, it's just south of downtown across the interstate there. So that that's Kansas, though, isn't it? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. It's still okay. Missouri. So, so close to where Kemper used to be, then. Cool. Yes, close to that. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, good luck to him. <laughs> good. Yeah, it. Thanks for the call, Tony. I appreciate <laughs> it. And good luck to him. That's right. I, I mean, like, I don't get, I don't get a vote today. But if I did, I would say yes. Give me new baseball stadiums. Resounding. Yes. I like cool new stuff. Sure. I like cool new stuff. I'm here for the shiny objects. I'm sorry. I do. I get nostalgic about some things, but I also like the cool new shiny stuff. Uh, Creighton's been in their new shiny arena for uh, more than 20 years now. It still shines, by the way. Wow. You see how it shined when Josh Odson was inside of it during the NCAA tournament? Oh, yeah. We were shining, baby. We were shining. We were shining you downtown baseball park. Matt D. Marinas is up next to talk about uh, the end of the season for the Jays. Little portal, maybe, and uh, plenty more. Uh, coming up on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Would you rather have to eat one hot dog every morning immediately after waking up for the rest of your life or... Every time you touch a piece of paper, it cuts you and draws blood. I would or rather eat, eat a hot dog oh, every morning. Give me that dog. Kevin says yes, wiping after using the bathroom. Oh. Toilet oh. paper. Oh. Ouch. Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Breezy and cool for your Tuesday. Expect cloud cover to stick around the first half of the day. Can't rule out some early spotty drizzle. Expect more sunshine in the afternoon, though there is a slight chance of a late day shower. North winds will continue to gust up to 35 miles per hour with highs in the low to mid 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Dingers, blasts, moonshots, whatever you want to call them. Everyone loves home runs. You dig the home run ball. And with FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more. That's right. Dinger Tuesdays, you loved them last year, so FanDuel has brought them back. We're here for another season with America's number one sports book. And whether it's Alonzo, Schwarber, Otani, whoever, just bet on a player to homer, and FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. As if you needed another reason to love the long ball. As we know, chicks dig the long ball. Visit FanDuel.com. Use the promo code ZONE to get in on all the Dinger Tuesday action. That's FanDuel.com slash ZONE. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. 21 plus in President Iowa. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Heard the catchphrase that's sweeping the nation? Jackson, Hugh, yeah. People are saying Jackson, Hugh, yeah to Jackson Hewitt because they love saving money on tax prep. Do you love saving money? Then switch to Jackson Hewitt today and pay less than last year. Thousands of people have already made the switch. Why haven't you? Stop waiting and start filing. You won't get a better deal or a better catchphrase. All together now. Jackson Hugh, yeah! Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com radio. 
With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source. By your mom's house. All right, welcome back. We're the Connor Amper Show. You're on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. We're now joined on the 42 Degrees of Source Hotline by our good friend, Matt DeMarinis, White and Blue Review. Matt, good afternoon, my friend. How are you? What up, Connor? What's up, Josh? How are you guys doing? Uh, very good, very good. Let's, uh, let's sort of put a bow on the end of, uh, on the, end of the season here for Creighton here before we, before we move on to the future a little bit. I guess... Um, what what did it feel like coming out of of that game? Um, was it did it feel like sort of the the end for that group, or was there still kind of like a a question lingering in the air? I mean, we still we we don't know definitively on on most of the the, the core pieces, but like just the feeling in the air in Detroit, like did it feel like kind of the end? Yeah, kind of. Um, the, the the aftermath of games like that and seasons like that are always really raw and it's hard to decipher what, what's going to linger and what's just kind of the, the immediate emotion of knowing your season's over. So, because they felt that way last year too. Yeah, it did. And, you know, last year was devastating, probably even more so. And just because of the nature of how it went down. And then, but but then they didn't think last year was the end. So I think, uh, you know, you, you, you toss that around in your head a little bit when you're trying to assess emotion and whatnot. But I, I think Detroit felt like the end, but I also wouldn't be shocked if there's enough of the pieces back to make one more run at it, you know? Or just play together for another year, because um, I do think that the, I do think that the things they say about each other, um, and how much kind of joy they have from being together and, you know, competing every day and just uh, all of that, I don't think that's lip service based on what I've seen of them every single day. So, I know it sounds good for a soundbite, and it probably some people could probably take that um, with a grain of salt, but I don't think it's. I think it's true, so it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me at all. I don't think it's likely because, in my point from my point of view, I don't know what's holding them back. Like I think, right? I mean, Baylor Shireman is done for sure, but I think he belongs in the NBA. And I think when you look at the way Trey Alexander played, especially down the stretch of the season, the last month and a half, I know everyone's kind of hung up on you know the Tennessee game and the shooting numbers and whatnot. But I mean, there's more to basketball than just the ball going in. Um, I think the way he played down the stretch and the way Ryan Kaufmaner played pretty much, I don't know, from January on, I guess, conference play on. Um, 
I mean, they, they, they went out like legends, in my opinion. I think they all should have some extremely lucrative professional uh, options to toil over, you know, pretty soon here. What do you think? Um, what do you think ultimately was like the shortcoming of of that team, and or, or or do you more approach it from the perspective of like, you know, they got they got the most out of it they they possibly could? Like, I guess wh- when you when you sort of parse through the game and 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 how they went out, where do you sort of come up with? That's a really interesting question, and I don't. I'm trying to figure out the best answer for it because I. I come from a different point of view, I think, because my history of Creighton basketball goes, I'm trying to think of it, 30 years. Yeah, it does go back 30 years. So I remember I remember being a kid in the arena at Old Civic Auditorium that doesn't even exist anymore. And, I mean, there weren't, there weren't 2,000 people in that building. Mm-hmm. I mean, we used to run around the ramps and the, you know, the tunnels and everything just, like, without, we couldn't run into anybody. Um, and I remember how close they were to, you know, going D3 and not really being anything significant in terms of something the city could kind of rally around. And then what it's built into now, I think there's a lot of people that are disappointed in the way this season ended because they didn't get back to the Elite Eight and they didn't go to the Final Four. Um, and even though they had those aspirations, they, they ultimately fell short of them. So in, in that aspect of it there's i guess you can you can make an argument for it being a failure um i just don't subscribe to that because i know how hard it is to win any aspect tournament game let alone two and i know how hard of a time creighton as a program has had doing that as well and maybe i'll get to a point where i detach the past from the present Mm -hmm. a little bit it's hard to there yet because (laughs) I mean, they just, they just haven't they just haven't graduated to that level on a consistent basis yet. You know, I think I think Final Four or bus seasons are for blue bloods only, in my opinion. Like, if you've won a national championship or multiple national championships, then I think you can have the type of goals that are that lofty and consider it disappointing if you don't reach them. Creighton, I don't think is in that spot right now. No, and I, I just. Because I just know too much of the history, and I've seen it too much up close and personal to know how hard it is to get to this point, to know how much they struggled to get to this point. So, did the bar get raised? One hundred percent. Is the new standard set in terms of you know being in the tournament? What nine out of ten years? I guess eight out of ten years, and, and go on runs uh, to the second weekend and beyond, and what six or seven of those years? You know, mm-hmm. yes. No, no question about it. The standard has been raised, um, and the expectations have been raised. But to, to consider this year a disappointment um, is really hard for me to to actually latch onto. I understand people have that notion, but I just don't subscribe to that theory because they made history this year, um, even though they they ultimately didn't get back to the elite eight that they were at last year. Well, that, that's the question that I've sort of been like thinking about a lot for really even before the Tennessee game, like. Every we've talked about this before, you and I. Like every year, or maybe once every couple of years, as they go through these sort of waves of 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 cores, I think like man, and, and to tie it back to the past thing, man, like I don't know, does it get better than this? I I thought when Nate Funk, you know, had seventeen points in a game, I was like, dude, I don't know, it doesn't really get much better than this. This is awesome. And then Doug McDermott came around and he changed everything. Um, and then. You thought, okay, what's it going to be like after this? And they've had now two or three different waves of guys who have come through and continued to raise the bar, and including this one. And so it's from that perspective I look at, all right, are they going to be able to – is is this the standard and is this what they're going to be? Or does it like – or was this group just that special? And that's how we should kind of approach the last three years of Creighton basketball. Um, It could be. It, you couldn't get to that point, you know, because ultimately what, how special this group is will ultimately be determined by what happens after they leave, you know? So I think right now that right now they're etched in history for sure. Um, because you can go back and think like to the all time greats that you saw coming up and, and see that they fell short, you know, like, Rodney Buford, Ryan Sears, Ben Walker never made it to a Sweet 16. 
Kyle Corbin ever made it to a 316. I remember, I remember in 2003 when he was a senior and, uh, you know, Larry House and Anthony Bowden, all those guys, they were a six seed um, going to that tournament and they were flying high. I mean, they killed Southern Illinois in a highly anticipated championship game in the Missouri Valley. And then, you know, they had Duke, Big Bad Duke, Blue Blood Duke waiting in the second round if they could get past the first. And you're thinking, wow, you know, if, if we get Kyle Corbin versus J.J. Reddick shootout and then yeah. Peyton goes with 316 off of that, I mean, that's going to be unbelievable, you know. I think of the opportunity there, and that didn't happen. Um, you know, all of Doug's years uh, didn't happen in 2014. I remember being in the locker room in 2014. No. I've never been. I've never been in a more devastating setting in my life than 20 than that locker room. I mean, that felt like it looked like every single player had just watched their entire family get just destroyed. Like you know, like <laughs> a devastating accident. You know what I mean? Like they were. Right. That was depressing, and so you had these thoughts like, okay, here's an all-time great. Here's an all-time great. All these all-time great teams, and they never broke through. Like, what does it take? You know, how do you get there? And it was the, I think 2021 was, was bittersweet in, in some ways because they made the Space 16 for the first time and all these alums were, you know, so proud. But because of the social distancing and quarantine that we were all going through, they didn't get to come back to the city and be celebrated like they deserve to be celebrated yep. for being the first team to do it, you know. So I think as this group kind of took the baton from that one, and said, okay, you guys got to the 316, you kicked that door down now, now it's, you know, it's up to us, our responsibility, to maintain that as the standard. So I think to your question of, is this a standard or is this a, you know, just a special group? This is actually the second group that's done this. I know. Back <laughs> yeah. to back. Yeah. So, I mean, the first 316 was Marcus, Mitch, Ta- um, uh, Dame, all those guys. And then this young group of guys like Kalkbrenner and Trey and, them hard and uh you know baylor they all took the baton and took it a step further and then got back to that point and you know something bruce rasmussen said to me before they played oregon on our podcast um you know he said there's it's funny when you look at mcdermott's uh greg mcdermott's kind of run at creighton he's had these great you know classes these great you know veteran cores these special groups quote unquote you know and then after there's been a point where it's like, okay, when that's over, now Creighton's done. Like that, that was their yep. run. They had a nice little moment. And that's the way my brain is pre programmed to, to think about yeah. it. But I, that's, I don't know what that is. Back up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like Rath basically said, like, how many times are you going to bet against him? You've already done it four times. And now you have to do it a fifth. Like, you really think, <laughs> yeah. do you really have enough evidence right now at this point to think that he can't pull it off again? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is a new standard as opposed to just a blip. Uh, I, th- I think that I think that Mac has earned enough of that that trust for sure to think it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be that way um, still going forward. Not with I mean they'll 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 <laughs> they won't go probably to the Elite Eight next year. Um, but I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't write them off from it. Um, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, by the way, on that um, as as we sort of look ahead. Um, so okay, so you go through these waves. Um, does that make the, the sort of, um, the next wave, the head of the next wave, like Jackson McAndrew right away starting next year, or like, obviously you have to sift that sift through what happens with draft guys and the portal and all that stuff Mm -hmm. will start to come to fruition in the next two months. But like, I don't know, it, 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 it's starting to kind of feel that way, maybe a little bit for Creighton. Yeah. I mean, it's starting to feel like someone else's turn, right? That's kind of what time feels like right now but i mean you're also in such a weird phase right now because the season's not even over number one so the moving parts that are going to be thrown into the mix aren't even all there yet you know when it when it comes to guys transferring or guys uh you know declaring for the draft staying in the draft coming back you know this this next few months are kind of a a sift through period i always tell fans every single year i tell fans so once your team's done, just kind of log off for a few months because trying to track it all is very, uh, <laughs> yeah, very tense. You know, like you, people read too much into certain things and not don't read enough into other things. Um, and then when the season starts, you're like, you know, if you put it all together just from season to season, and there's a lot of surprises. But going along the way, it's very stressful to try to follow. So 
that's my advice every year to people is just like unplug, um, don't read into too much of it and just let the coaches do what they do. Um, cause it usually works itself out. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting with this young group, you know, Jackson McCain, McAndrews, obviously, you know, the most highly touted recruit coming into Creighton in, you know, ever. So he'll, he'll have big expectations. And that class looks pretty solid when you look at the, the type of ways they can complement each other. So it looks like a good core to build around. But, you know, you can also have some veterans back that can kind of help them, you know, graduate into it being their team. You know, Stephen Ashworth could be back. Uh, Ryan Kaufman could be back. Trey Alexander could be back. You know, they're, they're, it could be an easier launching pad for those young guys than maybe a lot of people are anticipating right now. So it could, they could come in next year as, you know, young freshmen along from their ride that has high expectations, and they'll kind of get to experience what that feels like from the outside in. So, yeah, um, yeah it'll be interesting to see how it's all put together at the end of the day because no matter what, they're going to have some young talent on the team for sure. Um, it's just, a, I guess the question will be how many, how much uh, veteran presence they'll have around them, either with the guys they have on the roster already or once they grab from the portal that are, either transferring up uh, to kind of make their own their own waves. All right, Matt. Uh, well, we appreciate all your coverage from Pittsburgh and Detroit was awesome. The pods uh, are, are a great listen, even though you don't know how to say uh, goodbye at the end, which <laughs> is fantastic. Uh, appreciate it, man, as always. Talk to you soon. Appreciate you guys. Have a good day. Matt DeMarine is a white and blue review on the Jays. I, I like the answer on, like, we... Um, you know, even if they are young next year, which I, I think science point to them being that way, we'll see what happens with, with, you know, the big decisions that they have coming up as it pertains to the draft. Even if they are young, I still think like, all right, you know, you, you got this coach and you got a couple pieces to build around and you're going to do okay in the transfer portal and fill holes that you need. Like maybe Creighton is not graduated to the level of a blue blood program, obviously, but they have graduated to the level of they're going to be good no matter what. They're going to be at least okay no matter what. There's not going to be, um, or they're going to get the most out of whatever they have. Maybe that's a better way right. to put it. Because um, yeah. even in 2015, the year after Doug, like they got the most out of what they had. They didn't have much. Like Isaiah Zierden was their best player. But like, you know, they, they, they got something out of it. They had a couple big wins that year. They beat Oklahoma, a top 25 team. Like, I don't know. So I think that's probably the place that Creighton's graduated to a little bit as a program right now. Quick timeout. Uh, we'll come back, wrap that up. And uh, talk about the portal for the two squads a little bit, and that'll transition into Jacob Bigelow, who will join us in a couple minutes as well. We'll talk about it from the Nebraska side of things. All to come on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. But head to 1620thezone.com right now to uh, check your picks. Make sure you are at, toward the top of the leaderboard on the basketball championship uh, bracket. Winner, by the way, gets $100 to Cops Pizza in Omaha. Check the leaderboard, 1620thezone.com. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM Radio. 1620 The Zone. There is only one constant in the universe, and that's change. Brent Rasmussen of Mortgage Specialists. I'm sure many of you remember the incredibly low interest rates that were available only a few years ago. Well, things changed. Now rates are higher. But would you believe me if I told you there was a time when people were paying double-digit rates? And that's the thing, everything changes. Rates go up, rates go down. So if you're waiting for the perfect time when rates drop before you buy a home, you might miss out on the home you really want. So when you think about it, what's a thing today might not be a thing tomorrow. See, change is good. I'm Brent Rasmussen, call me at Mortgage Specialists and we can show you all the details. Mortgage Specialists, driven, trusted, reliable. Click mtg-specialists.com. NMLS number 5918, Equal Housing Lender. Like eating out? Like saving money? Then get to Cobbs at 180th and Center, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 72nd and Jones for their daily specials. Tuesday is $3 off all burgers and sandwiches. Wednesday, buy any specialty pizza and get a one-topping 50% off. Then Thursday, all wings are a dollar each when you order 10. And this just in, all Cops locations now offer their own delivery service. Click CopsPizza.com to see the menu.
cops, pizza, and so much more. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Since 1972, family-owned and locally roasted Host Coffee Service has been roasting the finest coffee for businesses and restaurants. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navaj Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navaj helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navaj gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navaj is available online at navaj.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navaj, N-A-V-A-G-E. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Just to follow up on that conversation for a second here, here's uh, Mike on the YouTube. Hi, Mike. He says, uh, people thought UConn and Alabama would fall off this year, too. Can't make any predictions until you know what the roster looks like. Yeah, I I, I generally agree with that. But I, I, I also think from the positive standpoint, I, it, you know, and we'll transition this into Nebraska a little bit as well. I think they have two pretty good coaches who know what they want, know what they're looking for. That's a good thing. That gets you... That, that wins you, like, half the battle. You know, you have to find the guys that fit that. Stable, stability. Yes, obviously, but, like, you know, so we're going to talk about all these guys going into the portal, and people might get freaked out, and they're like, man, why is, uh, you know, why is Jamarcus Lawrence in the portal, and why is uh, Josiah Dosler in the portal, and, like, what's your core going to look like for next year? Just know that you got a couple coaches and especially one here in Omaha is really established in that purpose of knowing exactly what they're looking for, what they want. And then once he has that roster has a really good vision for it and can coach to it. I think Fred is, has proven that too. Like he, and, and there, by the way, you know, they got some, you know, they got some means at their fingertips as well in terms of cashola, you know, stuff that they could offer people in the, in the portal from that regard. And so, but the key is before you do that, before you start Abdel Masseying all over the place and you start <laughs> just offering everyone who goes into the portal because they, you know, had 14 points a game last year. Before you go into that process, you say, what do we want? And will that person be a fit into what we already have established here, which is our culture and the way we go about our business? I feel like both coaches have a pretty good that Mac has a really good grip on that. I think Fred has a pretty good one as well. And they have and, and Nebraska has, you know, let's say Creighton gets um 
get bad gets bad news for them on Trey and Cockbrenner. Okay, you're probably still going to have Ashworth. Maybe I assume Ashworth will be there. And then outside of that, there's really no core, right? Um, Jason Jason Green, <laughs> um, you know Mason Miller, Isaac Trout. That's kind of what you're dealing with. And then and then the freshmen that are coming in, which I think they're pretty high on. Um, at Nebraska, you have Mast Williams, Gary. You know, coming back, those guys were, you know, big contributors. I I assume, I guess, you know, you never know. You're going to lose in the portal at this point. So there's personnel part, but there's most of the time, and, and especially for those two programs who are trying to operate the way that they operate, um, you know, consistency and culture and having a program um, that you know what you're going to get out of it. That's a lot of it. That's a lot of it. Only a few of those schools nationwide can turn that thing over year to year and be there. And you're going to have to have a lot of talent to do so. That's what Nebraska was trying to do before. They're not trying to do that anymore. And I credit them for that. That's awesome. That's a good thing. Creighton's always known, you know, Creighton's known what it wants to be for the last few years here. And, and that's a good thing for them. So I, I think Dean Marinus's words of advice there are pretty good. You're going to lose some guys in the portal that you probably didn't expect to lose nature of the beast right now and that doesn't have to be the end of the world mm-hmm. and then when you get the guy in the portal this is a message to everybody basketball fans when you get a guy in the portal and he comes from wherever because he scored 17 points a game last year at whatever school he was at in the in the poo league he's not the second coming of jesus he fits into the rotation he fits into the piece of the puzzle that's what you can now have trust in in these coaches as they've become as obviously creating a little bit further down the line, like I said, but as they're both establishing now, it doesn't have to be like, it's this guy or we die. Unless his name is Jesus Shuttleworth, then maybe, but exception that proves the rule. It does not have to be. If we die, we die. Oh, dang it. If we die, we die. It doesn't have to be that. You know, you got, uh, you got some other stuff going for you. That's not just, personnel and remember it's all all the fans are judging this on what you do in march anyway so you have time to figure yourself out even if like oh you know six seed that's pretty that's, low. Right. that's pretty low for creighton number the stinky six seed well maybe they use that to navigate a, a easier path unless you're creating unless you're creating nebraska and you have to play each other in november next year oh yeah, what's 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 this? Josh, all about? you never got to squeeze a taking on that yesterday, but I'm they're happy pl- to clear out for you if you want. They're they're playing on the day of a football game. They're playing on the day of a Nebraska football game at home against Wisconsin. Is it uh the basketball game is in Lincoln? The basketball game is in Omaha. Is in Omaha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, and, and remember, what, remember, it, remember who please. is the rights owner to these games. It's a big East home game. Fox. Fox, also a Big Ten, Big Ten football, football rights holder. So FS2 is going to have this big game, maybe? At best. At best? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Seems like a poor decision. Maybe Nebraska public media would like to have it. Mm. It'd be a big one for it, NPM. It, it would. I'm trying to help them. Schedule it opposite the football game? Yeah. Nebraska, Wisconsin, just go ahead and take your shot. Nebraska, Wisconsin played 11 o'clock in the morning in... Creighton, Nebraska played 6, 30, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We, we can play at all times of the day now. It's open. It's wide open. We've already experienced everything. We played at midnight in Pittsburgh. FS1 played some played some weird college football start times. Like They got like Mountain West games kicking off. Yeah, there 10. you go. You put Nebraska-Wisconsin November night game, you put it at 7, 30, and then you play the, ba- the basketball game in the daytime. Right after. Yeah, before. Now there's the idea. Mm. That could be fun. Now we're cooking. All right, uh, we'll come back a little bit more on this on the Nebraska side of things with Jacob Bigelow. And I know he's got some Purdue takes to get off as well. Okay. I think we're probably handshake meme a little bit on Purdue. Oh, or we'll find out when we return on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. But first, Josh, a reminder for my friends from the FanDuel Sportsbook. The sports calendar is loaded, including the final weekend of the big tournament. Um, and then baseball starting up. There's so many options for you. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. $200 that you can use to, like I said, bet the tourney, 
Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, so much more. Why don't we just go to that front page of the FanDuel Sportsbook and look at the tabs? So NCAAB, NBA, MLB, NCAAW, Parlay Hub, NHL, PGA Tour, Soccer, Tennis, UFC, NFL, NCAAF, Horse Racing. That's just a few of the options. There's so many options inside those. So head to FanDuel.com slash Happer right now. Once again, any winning $5 bet gets you $200 in bonus bets. Sign up using FanDuel.com slash Happer. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 and over present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Spring has arrived and Lanahan has everything you need to revitalize your landscape. Color perennials, shrubs, flowers, and fresh dug trees, all grown right here in Nebraska. Lanahan Nurseries, your homegrown headquarters since 1974. Hi everybody, Gary Sharp from Lindley Clothing. People go, hey Gary, what's your fit? And I usually say, mm, not good. But then I go to Lindley Clothing and they say, we can fit you in the best styles. They've been dressing men for over 88 years at Lindley Clothing, service top-notch, and their selection. From sportswear to tailored clothing, they have me and you covered. And right now, they have you covered with a new addition to the Lindley Clothing family. It's Well Suited. You can find out how easy it is to shop for you and someone in your life at Well Suited Top-Notch Staff. They'll help you find exactly what you need for prom or any special event. At 132nd and Dodge in the Linden Market, 132nd and Dodge in the Linden Market, you'll find Lindley Clothing. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Storm Chasers travel to Columbus to take on the Clippers. First pitch is scheduled at 515. Listen to the game on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Email me, Connor Happer, with the Connor Happer Show at Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, at 1620thezone.com. Send me your love, your hate, and maybe a few hot takes. The Zone Inbox, presented by Equitable Bank. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Heating up. That's the country song, right? Remember when? Thank you, Chica Bigelow. Yeah, well, yeah. If I, when, whenever my open is concocted, throw that in there. He's on fire. Chica Bigelow, Huskers Illustrated, on the Connor Happer Show on sixteen twenty, the Zone. Boom shakalaka. All right, here's a note from uh, man of the NFL, Adam Schefter. This is real Adam Schefter. Shefty. Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers, weirdo Aaron Rodgers. Oh, God, this could be anything. Earned $81.14 through the NFL's performance-based pay system, the lowest amount among all NFL players last season. The system rewards all NFL players based on their playtime and base salary. If a player has a low base salary but plays a significant number of snaps, he earns more. But Rodgers, of course, had the exact opposite. A high salary and one play, or whatever it was, three plays. Three plays. Um, That's 27 bucks a play. He played 30, uh, he played 0.33% of snaps due to his torn Achilles. He got paid out $81, which I think is actually pretty good for the three snaps. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll maybe get thoughts on that with Jacob Bigelow of Huskers Illustrated. Hi, Jacob. Hello. Uh, 
twenty seven bucks a play. I mean, that's not that's not bad. Not bad at all. That's, I I thought it was I mean, actually hey, pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, hey, that's the content that the fo- the poison football brain people are looking for this time of year. Mm-hmm. They, they need their need their Aaron Rodgers fix, and Shefty is here to to bring that to you. That uh, today, I saw people uh, tweeting about the draft for the first time in a couple weeks, and I got sad about it. Yeah, no, nah, that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. Then the re- the return to our lives of of Mel Kiper. Todd, 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 no, Todd, Todd. Oh, can't wait. Can't can't wait. No, nah, it'll be yeah. That's that's when I officially. I mean, hey, baseball's here. Like, baseball's here, but yeah, I don't need I don't need any of that NFL draft crap right now. I'm I with know, you. Really I'm with you. Uh, Jacob, your thoughts on the uh, on the hoops last night? We had a couple fun ones on the on the women's side. I, I believe you tweeted that you were uh, parked on your couch all night. Yes, I was firmly planted uh, for both of those games. Uh, that. And both of those games lived up to the hype uh, in their own way. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the finish to UConn USC was a little clunky, but I mean, Paige Beckers did her thing and Juju Watkins did hers. And really looking forward to Juju Watkins being in the Big Ten next year. Mm-hmm. You know, she makes a trip to Pinnacle Bank Arena. I mean, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be, uh, that'll be must see stuff. And then, you know, that first game, obviously, you get the, you get the Caitlin Clark show in, uh, in all its glory. And, I, I I really hope Haley Van Lith chose to remain offline. Last <laughs> uh, it was not was not uh, she was getting cooked on and off the court. Uh, for her sake, I I would hope she uh, chose to remain offline last night. Uh, I agree with that. I, I said this at the start of the show when we talked about this. I thought it was amazing that LSU made Iowa look like the more like composed group of people last night because they. I mean they. Obviously, you know, their head coach is, is, you know, she's like that. And, um, that, that tends to, uh, that tends to seep into the team a little bit and it showed a little bit. Yeah, no, that is, that is, that's a very good point. Uh, we've got, you know, yeah. Protocol versus hit pieces and <laughs> defamation lawyers. And, uh, you know, I sent you the tweet that said Kim Mulkey looks like she gets her mansion burned down in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> um, I mean, there's there's a lot a lot going on on the sideline uh, last night, but I mean, there that's what that's what's so great about college basketball this time of year. College basketball needs characters. Um, it's why I'm with you on the on the Dan Hurley tra- on the Dan Hurley take. I am all for Dan Hurley. Um, college basketball needs characters, and there are plenty going in both tournaments uh, going into the Final Fours this weekend. Uh okay, so. Let's uh, let's recap on the on the portal movement so far. I, I I guess what's your level of surprise at at a couple of the entries here for Nebraska? I mean, there, there's there's different scales for all of them, and I think the Jamarcus Lawrence one maybe maybe caught some people by surprise last night. I guess what have you um, how, how taken aback have you been by some of these movements so far? Not particularly. Um, I mean, it's it's an un, it's unfortunately you know the new normal. Um, I know you know. Well, Plenty of people were reaching out to me saying, you know, "Who's the longest tenured Nebraska guy that came in straight out of high school?" Sam Hoiberg, and I'm like, "Yep, that's who it is." Yeah. <laughs> um, everybody else has there's been a good bit of turnover. I mean, you're losing, you know, four or five, you know, maybe six guys. I mean, it's the it's a new normal with college basketball now. I I don't think I'm particularly shocked by any of them. Maybe a little surprised with uh, Jamarcus. I mean, I know the. The staff was very high on him out of high school, and still, even after the the up and down you know year he had, I, I really liked what I saw from him at the end of the year when he was coming off the bench. Uh, you know that game against Indiana at Assembly Hall where he just kind of took over. I mean, he showed some flashes, and you know we'll always have you know Tom Izzo you know, <laughs> midway through his freshman year saying that Lawrence kid he's going to be a really good player. Mm. But uh, you know, we'll always we'll always have that. But uh, yeah, other I mean, other than that, you know, not too uh not too surprised by any of them yeah i mean well and you know we were just having this conversation i guess we're doing like a crossover kind of conversation with both creighton and nebraska neither of them have too much of a core next year in place i don't know if you'd look around the country and you'd see anything a whole lot different at this point given what people will lose in the portal what they're going to lose in the draft and and things like that but i I mean nebraska has been heavy on the hunt um this week and and they need to be because there's several open scholarships there i guess what are you what are you sort of looking for um in this stage as they move from leaving guys into 
hopefully acquisition. I mean, they've uh, certainly cast a wide net. Uh, that's for sure. Um, it appears they're zeroed in on you know on backcourt guys and uh, and some some interior guys. Um, they definitely have cast a cast a wide net. I'm wondering if I want to lock myself in, in in the room in a room and look up some tape on these guys to see if I can give actual thoughts on some of the guys they're after. But um, <laughs> I'm kind of contemplating yeah. if I want to do that or not. Probably but, too early. Uh, they, they, Probably it is still early. Like that's what I'm trying to tell. Like trying to you know caution people. Like you you can see you know Nebraska's name and they've you know they've reached out to this guy since he's entered the portal. I mean it's it's still early. Um, and the, you know stuff this week. I mean a lot of coaching staffs are going to have a lot of guys headed to the Final Four probably tomorrow. Um, you know to spend a couple days in Phoenix, you know Scottsdale area with the festivities this weekend. So. I mean, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a process. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But uh, Nebraska has certainly cast a wide net. So yeah, far. yeah. It 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 certainly looks that way. I I wonder what it'll end up looking like. And but that isn't that just like the new normal in college basketball. We just won't we won't know for a good period of time, and we shouldn't be partic- Like you said, we shouldn't be particularly worried about it, especially at this stage of of things. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, hey, I mean, let's look at the teams that are going to be playing this weekend and look how many, you know, transfers make up, you know, those rosters. I know, you know, UConn, their starting backcourt is two two guys that transferred. NC State, I think, has nine guys that transferred in. You know, they, um, Alabama, I mean, the majority of the guys on that team are guys that transferred up from the mid-major level. Yeah. Uh, Sears, Grant Nelson, Charlie Reitzel, um, you know, those are guys that made the jump from, Mid major to the SEC, and now they got Alabama in the Final Four, and then you know Purdue. Obviously, they you know have a lot of you know homegrown guys, but you could make the case that Lance Jones is the biggest difference between that team this year and that team last year. Just what he brings on both ends of the court in terms of athleticism and, and tenacity. So, I mean, the portals played a part in all four teams that we're going to see playing this weekend, and yeah, it is it is the new normal in in college hoops. Hey, I wanted to ask you about sort of sort of that idea, like. Uh, we, we've seen it work to success here, and it, it feels like Nebraska is at least, um, you know, trying to go down that path a little bit. But I mean, there is a lot of guys who are going to be in the portal who are going to make that jump up from mid major to high major, and you know, Nebraska has some built in mid majors that have had some success that are in the region. They they and they're looking very closely at those rosters. It seems like uh, some rosters of the of the Summit League to see um, what might be out there for them. Like this, does a group of those guys being put together with a Nebraska uniform on, like with, with a couple supplemented pieces around it, does that, can that work? I, I think it can. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'll take, I'll take that over, uh, over the first, the first couple rosters Fred had. Oh, that's you know, for the sure. Mixture, the, the mixture of Juco, Juco guys and mercenaries and uh, guys who only got a call when they've got their fourth star on rival. Mm. Um, I think it'll be, you know, I, I, I would say, I would take that. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'd be interested to see what the, what the feeling of that would be, but I, I think it'd be solid and it, it would be serviceable at, at the very least. Hey, before we uh, let you go, I know you want to like, I, I, let's, let's talk about Purdue for a second because everybody, you know, I feel like people still continue to hate on them, and there's always something that people want to say about Edie and the way he plays. And I don't know, the guy just dropped 40 in an Elite Eight game, and for and he's been the national player of the year. He's going to be the national player of the year again. And people, for some reason, can't uh, can't bring it to themselves to to respect the guy at all. Um, they're in the Final Four. They're going to have a chance to win a national championship. You, what is I like? And they still can't get respect. Why not? For Purdue, why not? No, I I don't understand the Purdue hate. Like, I, and then maybe it's because of you know I've I've interacted with Matt Painter. I've interacted with the uh, with the alums that are you know in the the BTN sphere, like Robbie Hummel and Rafael Davis. I mean, they. I mean, I don't I don't understand it. I don't understand the Edie hate. Like, I, I we get it. He's tall. I mean, this is this is going to sound eerily similar to some thoughts you've had on a team locally here. You know why they don't get called for fouls? Because they don't foul. If you get by them on the perimeter, guess who's waiting behind you? Yep. A giant man. It's built into a their plan. Large, a quite large giant man. 
And that is a part of their plan. They lead the country in post-ups because they have a giant man. <laughs> if the giant man isn't going to go up and you know, try to just put it in the rim, they'll have an extra pass or a kick out to some pretty good shooters like Lawyer and Smith and Jones. And that's, that's, that's the, almost the only time they take jump shots. They don't force jump shots. They gotta, they, everything they do runs through Zach Eady. And if you had Zach Eady on your team, everything would run through him too. Yeah. And not every guy who's that tall is going to put up the numbers he has. I mean, it's nothing to shake a stick at that he's going to be the back to back, you know, national player of the year. And, you know, people can say what they want about his NBA prospects or whatever. But I mean, if, if any other player, did the I kept the receipts thing like he did at, at you know the post game after yeah. they beat Tennessee. People would be loving it like on social media. They're like, look at him, he kept his receipts. Like, hell yeah, Zach. But but because it's Zach Eady, it, you know, it people weren't. I mean, it's it's it it makes very little sense. This is not me white knighting for the Big Ten. I <laughs> I, I mean the Purdue the the Purdue hate has has gone has gone too far. Matt Painter is a damn good basketball coach. They run really good sets, really good offense. And they and you know, they there's a reason that they've they've made their way to the Final Four. They were clearly the class of the Big Ten. They're one of the best teams in the country. And I think they'll be playing on Monday night. Yeah, I feel like um people just I mean, we talked about it all year. Like we have preconceived notions about them and it's and it's it's based upon years of lack of postseason success. And then of course, uh, with the cherry on top being 16 versus one last year, of course, but mm -hmm. we, we didn't watch, you know, a lot of people were like, Hey, let's, let's, wh what do we know about Purdue? All I know about them is that they lost to a 16 seed last year and they have that really tall guy who doesn't move very well. He's still on their roster. Let's pick against him again this year and let's never, you know, and then, Oh, look, the, the final force here and, and they're there. And, Maybe I'm checking this out for the first time this year, and I think that's probably what's happening. Yeah, and people's immediate joke was, oh, Purdue's got their worst nightmare, a double-digit seed in the Final Four, look out. Like, uh, I mean, it just, like, it just kept on kept on going, and, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, let's put it this way. People have complained all year about the way it looks for Purdue. It looked a lot worse when Virginia was on the same track. And any and any you know any made shot was you know I mean they, that team had had guys to you know type from how guys they so they had they had pieces but I mean Purdue I mean they're they, fun they run, they're legit they're fun. fun they're fun I like them I mean they I mean I mean if you don't enjoy watching Braden Smith run the point I mean this is the ultimate like college basketball sicko stuff but I mean they they're fun they're fun the story's fun Matt Painter is is not a psycho. He's the most like normal every man coach that you could like possibly imagine. He's just a guy from Indiana who grew up in the heyday of basketball in that state, and now he's you know taking a program to the Final Four for the first time in more than forty years. It means the world to him. It means the world to the alums. It means the world to that program. I mean, it, it's a great story. I hope we get UConn and Purdue in the national championship game. I think we deserve that after this year. Oh, absolutely! It would be a complete contrast of styles. Coaching wise, personality wise, the way the two teams go about their business. But I mean, those two teams, I feel like I've been on a collision course all year, and I hope that's what we see on Monday night. Me too. Uh, Jacob Bigelow, enjoy the uh, enjoy the rest of what we have. Three more games of college basketball, and then we go full full uh, Bigelow season with coaching changes and yeah. things of that nature. Indeed, indeed. I got to enjoy the time while I can before <laughs> I go back to the hole for a couple months. See you, uh, man. And uh, well, yep. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's uh, Jacob Bigelow of uh, Baskers Illustrated and the Stretch Big Podcast. Can't wait. Drake got a good coach. Drake got a good coach. I'm glad you said that. Uh, you being of Northwest Missouri State. I, I lived there for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, how about that, Drake, going out and get Ben McCollum? A lot of Coaches would have said no, like we can't we can't hire the D two coach. Uh -huh. We're not D two. I love that. I mean yeah. they're I, I think they're I mean they got guy wins, knows the area. They got some ties in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get some guys out of there. I've always wondered why Drake doesn't have more dudes from Nebraska on their team. Um 
and maybe that will be the case a little bit more now, or at least the idea of it um, will be there. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that, Josh. Drake and Josh. Handshake meme. (laughs) Drake and Josh handshake meme. Uh, They did get themselves a good one. That's for sure. Uh, all right, we'll come back. We'll see if there's anything out of football practice that we uh, that we need to catch up on because there was that today. Some defense chatter. Ooh. And uh, we'll wrap that thing up. Coming up on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. I'm a fabulous driver. The Connor Happer Show. I'm one of the best friends you could ever have in your life. On 1620 The Zone. I hate you. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. I wanted Nebraska to settle in, make some shots early, and then get into a moderate pace because they're not built. Like, start with their Air Jordans and then then slip on the uh, Skechers or the Hocus. Nebraska got sped up at the beginning of that game, and they got into, hey, let's just trade threes. And they did it to themselves early, and it became durable. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Breezy and cool for your Tuesday. Expect cloud cover to stick around the first half of the day. Can't rule out some early spotty drizzle. Expect more sunshine in the afternoon, though there is a slight chance of a late day shower. North winds will continue to gust up to 35 miles per hour with highs in the low to mid 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. When it comes to protecting your home, J. Stennett Contracting takes pride in ensuring every detail is handled. Roofing, siding, gutters. When it comes to the exterior of your home, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. Have you noticed stains on your ceiling this winter? With storm season around the corner and the damage it can bring, let J. Stennett Contracting ensure that your roof is durable and holds up against the weather this spring and summer. When you need an honest assessment, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. JSCRestoration.com College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one 800 238 Six three three. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialists. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. Nebraska Cancer Are you someone who tries to drive all distracted by your phone? Someone who props it on the steering wheel or peeks down at it for a glance or just scrolls and scrolls? If so, you could be the next person to get into a thunder bender, get a ticket, veer off the road, or even cause a crash that kills you or someone else. Enough already. Put the phone away or pay. Pay for it. By Nitsa. When you get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapenos, Pepto Bismol's there. Pepto Bismol provides fast, effective relief from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. All the things that can happen unexpectedly on vacation. So before you travel, pack the Pepto. Pepto Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, 
So is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Here comes the clown. Uh, Unsportsmanlike conduct today will be out at the yard. Baseball boys out there. I know Josh, Nick, John, all lovers of baseball equally. We'll be very excited to be there today. Are they the baseball show in the station now? I thought we were. Well, I'm just saying they, they're they're throwing their hat in the ring because I know sure. that they all love baseball a lot. Genuinely. Genuinely thoroughly love baseball. Everything about the game. Creighton in Nebraska tonight at 6 o'clock on 1180 The Zone? I thought it was right here on 1620 The Zone. I was actually trying to look that up right now, yeah. but got, uh, got a little sidetracked by some other things. See, no, somebody, like, I, I thought we were doing the local versus local on 1620. So Mark is going to text me in about two seconds. Yeah. But you go, you idiot. Yeah, right. Check the check the schedule. I'm going to bet my <laughs> we're taking bets on this. Josh, oh, did you yeah. find an answer? Did okay. you find an answer? Our please tell me drives are very difficult to navigate. Yeah. What is today? Tuesday. Yep. April second. 1180. 11.80. 5.45. 5.45. So you get the full pregame with uh, John and Nick. At uh, th- So the boys of April are here. And then it'll be John and I tomorrow on Creighton in North Dakota State. The Bison. Baseball. That game also on 11.80 at 5.45. That, we knew that. That we knew. Well, we should have known this one as well. Just confirming it. Butler, 545 Friday, 1180. Uh, I got a grab bag of things for you here. A couple, couple topics I want to... A potpourri, if you will. Move through. Uh, this one, th- here's a tweet from Trav Alberts. Hi, Trav Alberts. Uh, welcome to Man Crush Tuesday on today's show, Matt Painter. It's in response to uh, one Jacob Bigelow. I was going to put up a poll question. Is Purdue fun? Purdue is fun. I, I, I'm actually on board with that. I, I think Purdue is fun. And if you have not been watching, then you'll probably vote no. And maybe if, you know, on the yes voters, we could sort through some of the ball knowers on this show. Mm. If you watch Purdue in Tennessee, you enjoyed yourself. Did you flip on Purdue in Tennessee, Josh? I did. Did you like it? I enjoyed the game, yeah. But sure. you didn't think Purdue was fun. Because you've been no, well, you've been brainwashed. Well, mm. You've been brainwashed. That's not what I said. I was well, curious I if the audience would agree with you. Because I don't think the audience would agree with you. The, you've been brainwashed, Josh. You looked at you saw the Purdue logo and you saw their jerseys and you thought this is stupid. I don't like this. I don't want them to win. I saw Zach Eady move like Sean Bradley in Space Jam after his powers had been taken away. He doesn't move particularly well. That's no, what, that's because why he's nine feet tall. Did you see him try to throw out. a fastball yesterday? <laughs> you did show me that video. He threw sixty-eight to seventy-two miles an hour, he right on target, though. Tall. Right on, right on it target. It was it was a dart, a very slow dart. I think Maybe he a picked, paper airplane. I think he picked the right career. Yeah, I think absolutely. he picked the right collegiate sport. Absolutely. And I enjoy watching him work hard to get uh, to get post ups, and because like you know the ball's going to him. Right, that's that's one thing Purdue never gets lost in. Like Creighton gets lost in it sometimes, trying to like do other stuff. And what the, do we do? The ball doesn't end up in Kalkbrenner's hands, but for Purdue, yeah, you, it's going there, and it's become a good passer outside of the post. And they have great. I mean, Braden Smith is so much fun. Like Jacob said, Purdue is fun, and as Jacob comments in, ball knowers will vote yes. People who know vault who know ball will vote yes. Um, on a uh, similar subject. Bullet Point Bob is returned. BPB. On the Equitable Bank inbox. He writes in, Chopper. Sorry about the Jays loss. I oh, w- that's your name. Yes, not, Chopper. Not the subject line. Uh, sorry about the Jays loss. The subject line was Jays season. Okay. I would say that they had a really nice season, and the NCAA tournament does not make or break the overall season. It feels like we're building to something. 
For me, the worst loss in all of sports is when your hoops team that you have ex- you have high expectations for bows out of the tournament. That loss stings the most by far. Now it seems like the tenor of the conversation is about what Creighton can do going forward. That seems premature. The core is still intact with this team. Trey, Kalk, Ashworth should all come back. And in two quality transfers, a true point guard and a guy who can shoot and or be a hustle guy, one of the transfers needs to be a, a dog, and the core three will have to agree to let the guy be the man on the team next season. Let Miller slide in as the first guy off the bench. Hope that an incoming freshman can be a contributor. No reason this team cannot come together for one more run. Kalk is not going to the NBA as it stands. Trey would be a late second round guy, and that's not a guarantee of anything. Come back for one more run, then Kalk and Trey can go play in Italy and make some nice money without the NBA two-way nonsense. There's still hope for this current team. I don't disagree with the idea that there is still hope for this current team. Um, They seem to really like each other. Like Like, That means a lot to them. I think that it could genuinely go either way for all of them. Um, I, I guess I'm just talking about Trey and Kalk. I'm not talking about Ashworth. Um, I, I think he could genuinely go either way for both of them. I would not begrudge them if they left. I would be ecstatic if they came back. And I think they would they would have plenty of reason to. I mean, Cockbrenner would be Cockbrenner would really start to put his name next to the greatest some of the greatest of all time if he comes back for another year and he leads could him to so- another NCAA tournament. Solidify that tank right. you had and, and make it not seem so weird that you said it. And Trey would be right there. Yeah, and Trey would be right there as well. And by the, yeah, I should have asked Dean Marinas about that. We kind of ran out of time with him, but he's like the he's like the author of that take. Cockbrenner. Oh, okay. Cockbrenner, go. Uh-huh. He's like he's full on it. I'm only one foot on the train. He's full on it. That guy's crazy though. <laughs> um, and then another thing here from um. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna get to do, uh, a couple practice things here. Here's here's something that Tony White said today. Ooh, Nebra- you know Nebraska defensive coordinator Tony White. I do. He says, "Quote: This group of guys, they haven't done anything. This group together, we have not done anything mm. yet. They want to be the best defense in the country." Josh, thoughts? Um, I guess those are both good things to say. Hey. Spring ball, this stuff is important. All right. This stuff is huge. Important? Oh, it's very important. You keep using the word important. Oh, I'm it's not sure. Very, you know what it means. very important. Very important. Uh, by the way, I'm Purdue. Alex and Lincoln says, Hi, Alex. Uh, I hope the, I just hope the Big Ten gets that extra money for Purdue winning the championship. Ha- quote, money is fun. John Bishop. Now that's fun. Money. Important also. Money is important. Money is important. Too. I guess not having money is more important. What's the what's a share? I don't even know what a share is worth. What like when they talk about units or whatever, oh, yeah. an absolute unit for the NCAA tournament. What do you get from winning? Because like the, the the teams that make it get a unit, um, or that's worth a unit, right? And then every game you win is worth another unit, right? So what's a unit? Oh, what's an absolute unit this year? Like it's, it's, I don't even, it's like a hundred thousand dollars for the conference or something like that, or maybe even less than that. I think they talked about this yesterday on the, uh, on the program. And that's why I don't know what they were even talking. This about. is from last year and yeah, SEC t- team won't win the NCA men's basketball tournament, but the league will eventually take home 34 million from winning games in March. Madness. Oh, okay. That's some units. SEC sent eight teams to that tournament. Those teams will end the tournament having played 17 games. Each game played will be worth roughly $2 million. $2 million? Okay, I was way off. That's an absolute unit. <laughs> That's for sure. So whoever said that it wasn't important for the conference to win games and you should conference root? Mm, I don't know. I just like I like Dan Hurley for other reasons, and I like Purdue. It'll be it'll be both of my narratives coming together in the national championship game if we do indeed get. Okay, there. this is what we need to do. We need to get on the same page. I know we got to get going, but we either need the two good teams to get into the championship game, or the two f- silly teams to get into the championship game. I can't have UConn throttling that poor offensive lineman for NC State. You can't. I mean, you don't want to watch DJ Burns in the national championship game. 
I do, but I don't want to watch him have to play UConn. Mm. You think it'd just be sad in that way? It'd be like 75 to 45. Well, I don't care what, like, I, I disagree with you because I, I, easier to I, I am all in on good versus good. I am out on Bama versus NC State. I do not want that. I don't want, I don't want any combination of NC State in my national championship game, and I don't want Alabama in my national championship game. I would, I would I, agree with that. I, I need both of them. I need, I need UConn, and I need Purdue. But if one of these teams is going to pull an upset, I need both of them to pull an upset. Because no, I'm tired no. of not looking forward to that I'm national not, championship. I'm game. not leaving. I'm not leaving out there the possibility that one of them could be upset. Okay. I I need both of them in. Got a couple of wagons. All in. Hitch them to each other. Yep. A parlay, if you will, Josh. Ooh, a parlay. All right, we'll come back. I wonder if you did. Let me see. Which if you both if, of them to cover. If you no, like if you just did money line parlay. Oh. So Purdue is minus four fifty, UConn is minus seven ten. I could get you to minus two fifty four. You know that's not enough for me. No, I know. You Josh <laughs> wouldn't touch that. That's a hundred bucks to win thirty nine dollars. <sighs> I mean, I have that kind of money to put down. If you took them both to cover, then you're really cooking. You're up yeah. plus 271. You're almost getting to Josh territory. But Josh likes to see plus 450 in there. Give me some zeros. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll come back with more. This has been Responsible Gambling here on 1620 The Zone. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 The Zone. And no line for the bathroom. <laughs> How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Omaha jam like you're all in the same garage. Introducing Cox Fiber from the company with the fastest download speeds eight years in a row. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Limited availability in select areas. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and restrictions may apply. Analysis by Eucalypt Speed Test Intelligence in Las Vegas, Omaha, Phoenix. Fixed media download speeds Q2 2016 to Q3 2023. My friends, Kent Pavelka courtside getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins Weather Guard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Make the right call! Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through HIMSS, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at HIMSS, so is treating it. Just go to HIMSS.com radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. All 
All right, poll questions at Happer Show on the JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed. Just a couple of them up, and they seem like emergency ones, Josh. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I didn't notice anything about that. Erroneous. Erroneous on both accounts. Did you know the Astros threw a no-hitter last night? I did. Did you? I, I did. I'm the one who told you about it. 64% said, 65% said yes. Okay. Good um, job, audience. Not good enough, actually. I mean, th- I mean think about it. 35% said no. Um, and finally, is $81 for three plays of Aaron Rodgers a good deal? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good deal. Like a good deal for who? Uh, me, the Aaron Rodgers hater. Well, you don't get anything out of it. I get satisfaction yeah. of not having to watch him play. Is it a good? Is it a good deal for Rodgers though to get paid the eighty one dollars for the three plays? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's yeah. bad for the Jets. No, uh, currently with the confusion once again no, no and the good. ambiguity of the poll question. It is direct at 50 50 mm. at the moment. Interesting. Early returns, though. Those are the poll questions. Josh, what are we watching today? We are uh, We're listening to. Well, we'll have one of those. Uh, we're watching basketball in Indianapolis, the NIT semifinals. Oh, no, we are not. Six o'clock on ESPN, Utah versus Kareem Abdul Jabbar and in Indiana State. Uh, that's a six o'clock and then Georgia versus Seton Hall at eight o'clock. Who you like? You like Indiana State and Seton Hall? Uh, who's Indiana State playing? Uh, Utah. Give me Craig Smith. Okay. And then Seton Hall and who? Georgia. Uh, you got to go with Seton Hall. Big East. We yeah, love the Big East. That's right. It's, they need those units. <laughs> NIT units. And then uh, the women's NIT semifinals also going on on ESPN Plus today. Five o'clock start for St. Louis and Vermont. Uh, got Uh Six o'clock is when the next game starts. So these are clearly at different sites. Minnesota. Minnesota. Versus Troy. Oh, Big Ten units. Yeah, that's right. NBA doubleheader on TNT. Thunder Sixers at 6.30, followed by Mavericks Warriors at 9 o'clock. And then, Connor, more basketball. I know you thought it was done. The G League playoffs start today. Oh, boy. First round, winner take all, best of one in the G League playoffs. I'm sure you knew that, Connor. The six seed out east, the Delaware Bluecoats, take on the three seed, Indiana Mad Ants at 5.30 on ESPN News. I like the Mad Ants. That's right. Uh, then 8 o'clock on ESPNU, it's a 4-5 matchup. The Salt Lake City Stars travel to Santa Cruz to take on the Warriors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give me the Stars. Okay. Uh, MLB action. MLB Network going to fire up here in about an hour for uh, Twins Brewers. And then uh, baseball back on TBS, a doubleheader to celebrate that. Reds Phillies at 6, followed by Giants Dodgers at 9 o'clock. Baseball on your radio tonight as well everybody knows 545 on 1180 mm-hmm. is where you can tune in to watch number 24 nebraska take on creighton a couple of 20 win teams cutting it up and connor yeah one for you at 440 on fxm that's their movie channel it's nightmare alley oh i love that movie a grifter working his way up from low-ranking carnival worker to lauded psychic medium Matches wits with a psych with the psychologist bent on exposing. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I watched that movie like three times. Yeah, that's a good movie. Four forty on FXM is where all great movies go. Which which idiot that I work with said that they didn't like it? Uh, Peterson. It, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was, of course. Yes. Yeah. I I agree with you. I okay. thought that was a really exciting movie. I consider my take validated. Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. Connor. That is Thank what you. we are watching tonight, and that is the show. If you missed anything, you could find it all at 1620thezone.com. The crossover from the ballpark is next. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank. 
We take banking personally. Member FDIC. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Hi, everybody. Gary Sharp from Lindley Clothing. People go, hey, Gary, what's your fit? And I usually say, mm, not good. But then I go to Lindley Clothing and they say, we can fit you in the best styles. They've been dressing men for over 88 years at Lindley Clothing, service top notch, and their selection from sportswear to tailored clothing. They have me and you covered. And right now, they have you covered with a new addition of the Lindley Clothing family. It's well suited. You can find out how easy it is to shop for you and someone in your life at well suited top notch staff. They'll help you find exactly what you need for prom or any special event at 132nd and Dodge in the Linden Market. 132nd and Dodge in the Linden Market. You'll find Lindley Clothing. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Bianca's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. When you get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapenos, Pepto-Bismol's there. Pepto-Bismol provides fast, effective relief from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. All the things that can happen unexpectedly on vacation. So before you travel, pack the Pepto. Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious